Hello, everybody, and welcome to Table Hops and our Rhyme of the Frost Maiden D&D campaign. Now, we have a surprise for you guys to, before we get started, and that is our first draft of our character intros, so you can get to know some of these people. And next week, we have a local artist that uh, we commissioned to create our characters, so we'll be featuring that next week. Uh, in the meantime, we hope you guys enjoy. Natal Burden is a joyful and friendly furball druid that hails from the city of Hartsville, where she grew up under the watchful eye of her cousin and ruler of the land, Tavis. She was fresh off an exhilarating but unfortunately heartbreaking adventure in Waterdeep, when Tavis summoned her and her best friend Valtrea to Icewindale. Together with old and soon-to-be new friends, she hopes to uncover the secrets surrounding the suspicious death and a seemingly never-ending winter plaguing the Ten Towns. Valtrea Margister is a young Azamar sorceress of noble birth. After the tragedy that befell her companions in the sewers of Waterdeep, she and Natal were summoned to Icewind Dale. So with the voice of her angelic guide Serafina, reminding her that her journey with Natal was not yet over, and that their paths were still intertwined, she shouldered her bag, packed with her warmest furs, and the carefully wrapped chicken and waffle sandwich from Krizik, turned her back on Waterdeep, and headed north. Losing your idols is hard. Losing your friends is harder. 16-year-old Anarissa Varskana lost both. Leaving the warmth of Waterdeep and her anonymity behind, she followed two of her surviving friends north to help the people of Icewind Dale. With her roguish talents, burgeoning magic, and occasional calligraphy, Ani will do everything she can to make sure they all come home safely this time. This is Button of the Frozen Cliff. Button is a large tabaxi and member of the Ragged Nomad's Elk tribe. Having been cast out by his chieftain, Button now spends his days in ten towns, taking odd jobs and gathering what information he can about a woman named Deidre. A woman he once rescued, but who is likely responsible for the death of his hunting party. Is Deidre truly the monster the tribe believes her to be? And if so, why was Button left alive? Myrnix is a directionally challenged Fred Dragonborn. What began as a lovely trip to the south to visit family quickly turned into a journey through the cold and desolate world that is Icewind Dale, which isn't quite their cup of tea. Myrnix passes the time offering their services as a barbarian to those in need around Ten Towns, often competing for jobs with their rival Button. Their newest job, given by a fur bulk named Tavis, seems to be becoming quite the adventure. Kira is a brewer from the town of Bremen, westernmost of the locales in Ten Towns. A recent series of Oneric visitations resulted in Tira being gifted with power by a figure called the Raven Queen to bring down her judgment on those who would attempt to disrupt the balance between the living and the dead. Accompanied by her two ravens, Leif and Sigrun, Tira has taken up as an adventurer, hoping to earn a bit of coin to supplement her dwindling income, which is now imperiled by the onset of the Frost Maiden's eternal night. They say a lone Furbolg is a dead Furbolg, but Toro of Exile begs to disagree. A rogue with mysterious powers who's been on his own for decades now, he's worked hard to master his criminal skills and harden his heart. But now, with dark and powerful forces at work in Icewind Dale, he's got to swallow back his pride and work with the team Tavis has put together. Strictly for the greater good, of course. And we're back, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed that intro. Well, we will be featuring a local artist next time you see that. Now, just a quick recap before we get started today. Uh, the heroes found Torg's merchant company, uh, which is run by a hill dwarf named Torga Icevane. Button confronted Sephic uh, Caltro in an alley behind the East Side Tavern. During the battle, Caltro revealed himself to be a vampire with ice blades. The heroes <coughs> won the battle, but Caltro escaped in mist form. After that, Tira was led off by Leif, her raven familiar. The rest of the heroes traveled to Kelvin's Cairn looking for Keegan's husband, Garrett, who was leading an expedition. The heroes rescued Garrett, 
uh, from a pack of crag cats, and he told the party that uh, he was attacked by a yeti and that the heroes need to find his adventuring party. The party head up, headed up to um, the top of the mountain, and on the way they met with uh, Owlvin, the owl bear uh, that is friends with Button, and you guys entered a frozen cave. You found a yeti and her young playing with a terrified form of a halfling from Garrett's party. You attacked and killed both the yeti and her young, as well as a huge uh, yeti mate that returned home. Uh, unfortunately, all of Garrett's party are dead. So we're going to just uh, retcon just a little bit. We're going to be starting today's session uh, right uh, as you guys are leaving um, Kelvin's Cairn, heading back towards uh, Tourmaline to meet back up with um, Tira. Sound good? All yeah. right, cool, great. Uh, so, oh, thanks, Margwin. We glad we're glad you enjoyed the intro. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do. Why don't I hear my music playing? Why isn't my music playing? There it goes. All right, cool. So uh, we're going to be just taking a little trip over to the Icewind Dale map where you guys should see that I should have had you guys load it before. It takes so long to load this giant map. But it looks so nice. It does. It does. Um, I can't wait as you guys explore and I reveal more and more of it. There's so many like dots everywhere. It's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're leaving uh, Kelvin's Cairn, heading back towards uh, Tourmaline, uh, and you are there with Garrett and uh, Mirnix as you're taking him back towards the, uh, the place. You've just informed him that his uh, his party uh, was slain, and he's kind of um, he's he's happy that you went and looked, but sad, of course, that his his compatriots have been killed by the Yeti. Uh, one other small thing, uh, Natel. You witnessed Valtrea kill the Tyke, and even though it was in self-defense, there's very little nature around in in um, Icewind Dale, so that that kind of shook you for a bit. So I'd like you to roll a uh, Wisdom saving throw, being okay. a druid, and that they're wild animals that they were murdered. Yeah, she, the baby was also batting around a halfling like a cat ball. Well. But, okay. Um, what am I rolling? Uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh, I have a plus eight. Let me see. Did I did I get a net one? No. Start in the party off. Good. A four. So I got a twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna send you something privately in the chat. As you guys you make it back to uh, <laughs> while I'm looking this up, what are you guys discussing with um, with Garrett? Uh, I think Toto uh, approached him uh, and it was just like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry we couldn't uh, bring back the rest of your party. Uh, and then he turns and sort of awkwardly shuffles off. <laughs> okay. And he says, <laughs> well, whoa. I know you did your best. So it's the best, uh, best I could ask for. Uh, but no one deserved that. Uh, whisper. Oh, wait, I'm trying to whisper to you in the wrong thing. I figure there's probably a lot of walking in silence. Like, there's not too many words for stuff like this. It's more just, you know, just kind of being there and being a presence, but not pushing, talking, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Valtrea feels super bad about the baby. Like, to be fair, that was an accident. Like, you didn't know it was going to just go off, so. Well, accidentally blasting it with Chaos Ball. But you did twin it by accident. That's true. That is true. Yeah, the twinning was the accident mm -hmm. part. Not blasting the mom. Yeah, because really, if she'd gotten to chose where it twinned, she would have had them both go on the mom. But you you have to pick a different target, and mm -hmm. there were only two. Uh... Plus, it would have died a like, slow death anyways. Like, what, what, what were we gonna do with the baby yeti? Like, bring that's it back to town. That's very true. And see no, if that that would probably would have ended. The yeah. zoo, the Icewind Dale Zoo. Everyone, make it down. Oh. Feed it to Alvin. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Come on, little that's guy. Probably, at Let's least go. it died quickly. I feel like Alvin would not have been a quick death. He would have known what it was like to be that about like a cat ball. 
I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm much more evil than Valtrea <laughs> yeah. is supposed to be. <laughs> well, I think it's also just a matter of sometimes you make you you do the best you can, but like, yeah. I mean, like it wasn't like it wasn't killing the halfling, right? Like, right. Yeah, it's it's a baby. It doesn't quite know any better, so you know, blame the mom. But like, like I said, what what are we gonna do with? A baby yeti like there's nowhere to take it so at the bottom of the base camp of this mountain uh you recuperate after the battle uh taking a short rest uh, and it, you also consume uh, one of your rations these are important to keep track of especially in icewind dale because um everyone should have 10 at least with your with your starting equipment and i assume that uh nutella and gang uh m- stocked up when leaving Waterdeep. So I'm going to assume if you don't have them written down, you have 10. So now you have nine. Make sense? Okay. I just, yeah, I just changed Sounds it good. in my sheet. Tabletop Santa, joy and holiday cheer from the Arctic Nomad himself. Oh, very good. Thank you. Uh, We got one inspiration given to the party. We appreciate that very much. And now I can uh, show you uh, our neat little inspiration thing where uh, we are going to be earning inspiration uh, for both myself and the party. So uh, let's just see how we do this new fandangled thing. PC number. Uh, oh, that's a DM. You guys now have one inspiration. Thank you very much, Tabletop Santa. So you should see that uh, appear momentarily. Very high tech. <laughs> the, the word processor. So, uh, oh, Tabletop Santa is Rick Rolls. What's up, buddy? Hope things are going well. Oh, cool. Yes. Hope your meeps are in a row and your dice rolls are good. So uh, with that, you start heading back towards Tourmaline and you head back through the Dwarven Valley. Uh, and now uh, that has t- some time has passed, you see that some of the there's some uh, dwarfs there that are uh, working through that valley, looking like they're heading towards mines of one type or another. There's many of them here. Uh, and you see that same emblem of Clan Battlehammer on there. Oh, we got to stretch. Everybody stretch oh, oh. to the left. Oh wait! Uh, no. This is the left. <laughs> <laughs> this is like doing the uh, this is like doing the, the the Star Trek bridge thing. We're like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, would you guys like to approach the dwarves or just move past them? Uh, we probably should probably tell them just... that one of their own is dead because that's the same. That's the, the the chick with the blue boots that we found. Who is it? I believe so. There, that was the, the dwarf that was... There was a dwarf wearing blue boots, correct. You found his body. His head was located inside the tavern. Or, uh, sorry, oh, the yeah. cavern. Different place. Did yeah, he was there, was like... insignia on him? Um, on his garb, when you did remove it, you did find that same insignia of the clan battle hammer. Yeah, because that's... Yeah. And we can say you removed it for identification purposes, like uh, kind of like dog tags, if you wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming Anarissa was the one who climbed down there, right? I did, but I was I was with the tiefling. The um... button pulled him out. Button pulled him out. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so so I wouldn't necessarily have it unless it was handed off to me. So uh, button, you uh, you know that the dwarf clans are different than the um, uh, the regged tribes, but sort of a similar camaraderie you imagine goes between them. So it's, or you can just uh, bypass it entirely. I'm not interested in talking to more dwarves about their dead. That works. Did you hand off the emblem to any of us since you He's don't He's still care, holding on or... to it. Or you just I didn't hold on to, on to any emblem. I pulled the body out. There wasn't anything on it. Okay. It Sounds good. So you guys uh, walk past the dwarves as they're working through the Dwarven Valley, and you head down. Uh, you, you see uh, some eyes cut, like looming over the snowy horizon, but uh, Owlin's presence kind of pr- dissuades them from moving in closer to see if you're easy prey. And uh, you soon make it close to Tourmaline. Uh, Button, you know you're going to have to let um, Alvin go back to the Lonely Wood while you're in town. Mm-hmm. They don't. They, <laughs> they're not going to allow him to enter. That's fine. He's All his right. own bear. I don't have any control over him. All right. So he gives you a look. Uh, he heads over to the Lonely Wood, uh, knowing this trick that if he goes there, when you come back, you'll probably have food for him. Mm. <laughs> we'll see. You make it back into Tourmaline, and 
as you head back in, uh, it's starting to get later in the day. It's hard to tell, of course, because it's dark all the time. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Margwin. I will fix that nameplate in just a minute. Uh, as you uh, enter the East Side Tavern, you see uh, Tira with her raven uh, sitting at a table. It looks like it would be able to accommodate everybody. Okay, so I guess we we head over. So. All right. Tira, you see your group? They look uh, a little haggard, a little worn. You have um, you have all looked better since I last saw you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's not surprising. I think um, been Button ran up to a Yeti, and I'm starting to understand how he lost an eye. <laughs> <laughs> but he survived, and that's what's important. Yeah. That's not the right accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I was just like, I was like, that's what's not, in Kimmer? That's not right. That's not right. <laughs> I mean, if you want to say he survived, but in the, sense that, in the sense that someone else protected him. So the oh, no, he did. Him. He held his own. He's it's just better that I run up to him than yeah. he run up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it's good that he paralyzes you first and then, you know goes from there so but uh but yeah so but we obviously have uh garrett with us right else so it's kind of i guess we kind of just discreetly just to save him from extra stuff to be like so this is who we're back with and no one else like just so there's a, a sort of a, a late 30s man uh, with uh, dark brown hair. He's sitting at the table. He, he waves to you uh, in greeting, but he, he just seems dispirited. He doesn't seem to really want to talk much. Okay. Is this a friend of Tira's? No, no, this, no, no this is, this is Garrett. Garrett. That's, oh, that's Garrett. Garrett. <laughs> 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 so uh, I'll... can I get him a drink or something like we're in we're in a place that has food and stuff right mm-hmm. like this is okay because he, he probably just having been out there for a while like it's been rations and you know so so I can go and make sure I grab him a drink or something so that he at least right. has so you head over to the um, you head over to the bar and uh, you meet with uh, Marta uh, Peskrik who is the uh, the um innkeeper of this place she's very young she's only like 18 or 19 but she runs this business uh and does pretty well for herself um and she brings the ales and everything uh, and food back to your table and she's are going to be wanting a uh, a room for the night uh yes yeah, i very much need to sleep it's been it's been about a day's travel from kelvin's or not not yeah. a day's travel but like a you know a good few hours uh, before you head into your next adventure, you'd probably want to take a long rest. Yeah, fair mm-hmm. enough. So, yes. All right. And I'm also, like, kind of excited to see someone who's, like, vaguely my age, like, running their own business. Like, this is not usually what you see. So it's like, yes. All right. Uh, for the whole party, uh, two gold, and that includes your room and your um, your food for tonight and, and tomorrow morning. Excellent. All right. That's, that's okay. acceptable. So uh, the food comes out. It looks good. Um, uh, Garrett's just sort of moving the food around his plate. He's not really eating very much. Um, Mirnix looks towards you and says, I don't really actually know how Mirnix talks, but (laughs) Mirnix says, "Uh, I think I can take him to Targos. Can't be but so hard, right? It's just that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) um, maybe we should send a guide with you. Or maybe you let Garrett do the um the the walking first. Okay. And you follow Garrett. I'll just be sure the muscle. Or, or even the yes. dog. Even let the dog go first. <laughs> yeah, Blue you know, actually it's... would probably be fine. Now, uh, you do have uh, Natel, but you feel free to hold on to this if you want. You did receive an orb of direction from Fala in the previous campaign. Uh, it's well, like when you left Waterdeep to come here. So oh. it's a glowing orb that basically points north. It's the D&D compass. <laughs> um, well, Do we know if think... Mirnex knows how to use a compass? Well, basically, <laughs> let's say it will help with the directional problems if she ha- okay. or they have yes. this thing. 
I love the idea that Mirnix would just start heading in the direction right. of the the red yes. arrow. So <laughs> when, when basically we'll, we'll, we'll do it this way. We'll roll a uh, so so if they if they have the um, the orb, they'll move in the direction they want to. But if they don't, I'll roll a d8 and they'll move in one of the cardinal directions or northeast, and, north, <laughs> and that'll just be the way they go. <laughs> oh, God, they're gonna get so lost. <laughs> That's how he wound up in the north. He just kept following the red arrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, I sort of uh, look at uh, Garrett and I say, "You have a long walk tomorrow. If you don't eat, uh, you may not make it back." Uh, he looks to you and solemnly nods, and he forces down a few more bites. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the rooms are prepared. Uh, you do hear a uh, the woman. Um... Sorry, I lost my page. The innkeeper, uh, Marta, she, she's beginning to sing a song. Uh, you, most of you can't quite make out the words, uh, but in some of the words seem to be uh, familiar to you. Like the melody, you think you've heard it before, or something about it is reminding you of it. So, um, can I... Is it in a different language, or... Well, make a perception check. Okay. 14. So uh, the rhyme, it's something you've heard before. You, you can't quite place it, but um, what you hear is the following. Ahead of winter's wind she came, the lovely woman with no name, draped in fur-lined cloak of red, to the icy lake she fled. The wind pursued her all the same, as sure as nights, she's dead. It was uh, pretty good until the end where it just sort of tapered off the rhyme. I know. <laughs> the, 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 maybe the, there's supposed to be some syncopation there that I'm not doing. But uh, anyways, uh, she says, oh, well, well thank you. Uh, I, I learned it from my grandparents, actually. Uh, it, it's It's been, uh, this ring has been passed through my family. Apparently, this woman came, stayed at the inn, and then this harsh wind came bursting through the door and tossing her about like a rag doll. Um... The, uh, my grandparents, you know, made sure she was all right, and in return, she gave him this ring. And then the woman was gone, and we have never seen her again. Mm. So, uh, the, the cloak is kind of what's reminding you of it. Uh, you remember, uh, the woman that was with your clan before, uh, she was also wearing this fur lined cloak. It was the only sort of clothing that, you know, sort of stood out everything else decently commonplace mm -hmm. uh, so she shows you this ring and I'll see if I can find it for you and uh, let me just see if I can show you the picture it's very cute so I want to show it to you uh, it's it's made out of wood it's fur lined uh, and it looks like this oh Aww. Oh my goodness! That is so cute. That is so cute. Uh, <laughs> big fan. Aww. Really want one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want one of those. Mm -hmm. That's adorable. I would wear the hell out of that. Yep. I've never seen a fur-lined ring. Before, I know, that's right? Interesting. I don't like the fur-lined. Like you I, couldn't do I, anything with it. But yeah, like, I. Like, I what if you got hot sauce on that? Like no. Yeah. <laughs> also, I, I, don't know. Is, I don't know. I think the idea is if the ring is metal at all, it protects you from getting... They just said it's wood. It's yeah, wood. it's a wooden ring. Yeah, well, then, then I'm not sure. Like, I was thinking it would protect yeah. you from the I metal and the I think it's just because magic. But... Yeah. You know, because yeah. magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's adorable. Uh, yeah, big fan it's of that. Very cute. So anyway, um, this sort of resonates with you because the woman didn't seem very old uh, when when you uh, met her before. No more than probably 30. But this uh, girl is saying that her grandparents met her. So it's not... The math's not adding up. Uh, where did you say that uh, this woman went? Or Oh, it, it, that was before my time, I'm afraid. That's just the legend said after she gave the ring, they never saw her again. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> it's a nice ring. Thank you. Uh, with that, she goes back to sort of cleaning the, the, the tavern area. Uh, you finish your meal, 
uh, you head back and you have a, a long rest after your uh, ordeal in the mountains. The um, next somewhere during this rest, sure, I would like to slip the spell book into Garrett's backpack because okay. none of us can use it, so he might as well have it. I just don't want to necessarily pull up, you know, more memories at this point. So I want to see if I can slip it into his bag. He's fairly distracted. I presume at some point he falls asleep and sure. I can just slide yeah. it in there. They, yeah, without a, he's not paying you any any mind. You easily slip it into his bag. The next morning uh, after breakfast, Mirnix takes um, Garrett uh, orb in hand or did Natel or Natel unsubscribed? Sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we would have given the orb in hopes Okay, it would help, but Getting yeah. there shouldn't be a problem, because Garrett. You say there. that. Getting back. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll say, unless Natel, when she comes back, says they didn't. Um, Mirnix has the orb and takes Garrett to Targus. Natel, did you what? Gi- did you give Mirnix the orb or did you hold on to it? I no, I gave Mirnix the orb and I told Garrett what it does, okay. so that maybe he can teach Mirnix how to use. That sounds good. All right. So Mirnix has the orb, uh, goes with Garrett and Boy, the dog, and heads towards Targus, leaving you uh, in Termalane. Let me just move over to that um, area again. Uh, it is what time would say morning. However, it still feels like night with the darkness around you. And you guys are at the uh, the East Side Tavern. Okay. Uh, after breakfast, uh, you start... Uh, looking around the town, is there anything you guys need to purchase? Any uh, supplies you may need, or is everybody? Uh... Um, I think just logistically, we can say I paid for the night at the inn prior because that was two gold coins. Mm-hmm. I just need to make sure that someone pays for it, yep. and I can certainly do it. So, and we seem to be kind of rotating paying, anyways. That works. So that's fine. So, um, everybody good on rations. We all good on health potions. We all good to go like to purchase some more rations uh i oh alvin is indeed a hungry bear that makes sense <laughs> is there anything that actually we could like it, are there things that could be used for like <laughs> like pet rations or something that could be used for the owlbear like is there something that's no, not he only seriously eats, a pig so he so he does pigs. eat yeah. he eats an equal amount of three pigs now this could be Anything in they could be seal. It could be like uh, the reindeers that the the ragged tribes follow, uh, but it's that amount of meat. Um, so yeah, no, uh, I was just thinking that there's no way in this winter that pigs are going to survive. But like, it's it, I was just trying to see like, are there even options? For- <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you find a small shop where they have uh, rations of plenty, so uh, you can all purchase what you like uh if you're purchasing purchasing specific owl owlbear food that's going to be nine gold pieces he's an expensive uh, boy i'm just gonna get let's say another five rations i guess okay uh so five rations that's going to be uh one two uh two gold pieces and five silver pieces okay um, I will buy uh, a gold worth of rations. Okay, so that's two days worth of rations. So that's two rations is a gold piece? Two rations is a gold piece, exactly. Okay, okay. then give me ten gold. Ten gold, twenty rations. Mm-hmm. Okay, that works. Okay. Is this all for you, or is some of it going... Or, like, what are you... Um, that's a lot of no, rations. I'll, I'll, well, yeah, I'm just going to have them. Okay, that works. They're, they're two uh, then, pounds each, so make sure you can carry them. What? Uh, there's bits of jerk. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry to tell you, PHB, <laughs> two pounds for one day's worth of food. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That's about enough okay. food for a day. I, I always thought cold. it was jerky. It's heavy ass jerky. It's the big bags, <laughs> it's not the little. <laughs> I mean, you also need to eat an insane amount of calories when you live somewhere this cold. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're living in somewhere like Alaska, like, you have to be eating just, like, several thousand more calories a day just because your body burns through so much. Plus, you guys are hardy adventurers. Yeah. 
Buff you are a big boy, but you need a lot of food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll buy uh, whatever nine gold thing plus two uh, two days or four days worth of rations. Four days worth of rations is two gold. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then whatever nine gold thing you said for the bear. Yes, uh, owl bear food. Alvin oh. treats. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so as you are, it, any, yeah. anything else you guys need to purchase? Hold on a I second. Let's two. do one at a time, starting with Tira and going across. Oh, I was going to say, since this is Tamerlane, mm -hmm. and they're known for their gems, is there any place here that we could possibly trade in these bloodstones? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say because uh, their main, um, they're, they're a gem mining town that you'll be able to find um, a place to trade them in for gold. Uh, I don't remember if I told you how much they, they were worth. If not, I'll just go back to that 50. page. 50, 50 each? Gold. Yeah, you, you're welcome to do so. Okay. Yeah. Good call. Because not a lot of places can do it. This place obviously can because they have a gem mine. Yeah. Was there anything else that we picked up? It was just those two gems, right? Yeah. And the only thing I think I haven't figured out at the moment, and maybe there's someone who could tell me, is I still have that clear potion that the tiefling had. You don't know what it is. No, I know. But is there someone in town who sells potions that could tell me what it is? Uh, in I mean... Tourmaline, no, but Tira might be able to identify it. Okay. Possibly. Well, bloodstone for each of us, perhaps, or just two bloodstones? I can't remember. Uh, I think it was a bloodstone for each of us. I think it was a bloodstone for each of you. That's yeah. what I had written down. Yeah, yeah Which, that's correct. Was that the week that I wasn't here? It's the one with I the believe... goblins, with the polar bears and the goblins. Yes, that was the week I wasn't here. Okay, okay that's the one where Toro I, went off on his own. Yeah, I wasn't finding it in my notes, and right. I was like, that's weird. I usually record whenever we find Trish. No, you went off on your own. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and That's if fine. you guys would like to purchase health potions, health potions are 50 each. Yeah, I will what? say I still have, because I haven't used any, I still have four greater on me. Tira, was that a, a check? That was an arcana check, yeah. Right, uh, you can't quite make it out of what it is. Uh, it's definitely not a healing potion, I'll tell you that. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Okay. We'll just... Um, you can try again uh, when you have a, a time to rest. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? No, I think that's it. I've still got three health potions on me, so... So outside... Yeah, I have four regular and two greater. So oh, then you guys should good. be good. So as you leave the, um... As you leave the, uh, the, the shop, uh, you see two bundled-up humanoids talking to one another. Uh, when you pass by, uh, one of them sees you and waves to you in a friendly manner and says, uh, you seem too prepared for trouble. Are you here about the mine? Can be. Mm. You want to fill us in? Uh, uh, splendid. My name is Oris Massu, and I am the uh, speaker here in Termalane. Uh, it's a large half orc individual. He says, There's been some. something in there that's been killing the workers and preventing the miners from doing their job. Uh, I've, I've posted 50 gold pieces for anybody who can rid uh, the mine of, of the danger. But none so far have uh, volunteered. You look to be uh, of the strong sort. Maybe you'd be interested. Mm. I hope so, because that's what you told the DM before he prepared tonight's session. Yeah. <laughs> I do think you... we can talk along this side quest, guys. Yeah. I. Th it's. Uh, do you have any idea of any clues to what kind of monster is in the mines? Uh, let me take a look. Well, I hope you as a DM know. The character <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're going to get in there. Chris is going to roll a d100. Look, you're fighting a... <laughs> uh, he says, well, actually, um, I just found it. <laughs> a, a, a group of kobolds actually crept into the mine a few days ago, entering from the surface and forcing the miners to abandon their jobs. N no one was killed, but the, the kobolds are too dangerous for the miners to deal with. Uh, now, a human miner... Dangerous kobolds? <laughs> well, they're just commoners. Um, uh, a, a human miner went missing a few days before the kobold showed up, prompting other miners to fear that a monster must have crawled up from the underdock. Um, I mean, it's possible he just fell down the mine shaft. who's to say? But regardless of which, there's kobolds in there, and they're a pain in the arse. Hmm. Well, we have some experience with kobolds, and... Uh, oh, how do, I'm uh, sure. They're the worst, aren't they? They're so small, gnawing your kneecaps. Too. 
Actually, one of them is our is one of our closest friends, so we might be able to get them to leave peacefully. All right, we'll so he see. looks at you for a minute, and then he just sort of starts guffawing. He's like, ah, you're funny too. I tell you what, I saw three kobolds on each other's shoulders wearing a trench coat trying to pass off as a human. <laughs> can you believe it? Oh, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, yes I it. can. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, the uh, uh, speaker, uh, Matthew, uh, points off in the direction of the gem mine, which I will show you, and it's coincidentally just that way. <laughs> to the gem mine. To the gem mine. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you guys would like to do before you start investigating? Uh, no, I think that's it. All right. Yeah, I, I think we're okay. Um, what if we find gems in there? Are you saying that to the orc? Yeah. It says, well, anything you find uh, is is yours to collect. However, please know that this mine basically funds the entire town. So mm -hmm. maybe just take what's reasonable, shall we say, and I'll look away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you Sounds start... Sounds like a fair trade for killing some kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... consider them dead. You start traveling uh, towards the gem mine. Uh, it's not too far away from uh, the town itself. Uh, you don't see Alvin popping out anywhere. It looks like uh, he'll only appear when you're traveling farther than the gen generic vicinity. Yeah, it's fine. Um, he's his own bear. He's his own bear. The entrance to the gem mine is an open tunnel in a hillside. Empty carts are parked near the entrance, next to which a crude wooden sign has been propped up. Written on the sign in charcoal are the words, Kobolds only. I can't tell. It's too bad we don't have any chicken and waffle sandwiches. I bet we could totally win them over if we just had some of those with us. It's true. Mm -hmm. Or about the pet rats. Yes. What the hell is a waffle? <laughs> <laughs> These southerners are quite odd. They've just if you stick around long things. enough, I will introduce you to the wonderful world of waffles. Just you wait. Uh, Anna, Rissa, make a uh, you're, perception check, please. You're not making a good please. case here. What am I making? Perception check, please. Perception. <clears throat> okay. Wow. And is anything making a perception to see me? Because they would have disadvantage. No, that's not what it is. Um, just as, making sure. As you kind of just glance off to the side, you notice the sign um, that was erected recently. Uh, you're looking at the writing of it, the actual like way it was written. And even though it says kobolds only, you've seen Marv write. And this <laughs> is a lot more uh, sophisticated, shall we say. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I kind of look at the others... And I, and I point out the writing and go, so just based on what we know of how much Kobold's right and Marv's handwriting, pretty sure that human is probably alive. Kobold's so. are idiots. They, they can't write. It, it takes a while. Well, <laughs> it takes a while, but Marv, Marv does okay and he's learning. So, but his handwriting, like the style that you usually see is not this. This is clearly someone who has had far more practice all right mm -hmm. so will you guys enter the mine anything you want to do outside of it, it says kobolds only so we can't yeah we it looks like you gotta turn back i think maybe that's more of a suggestion than actual rule probably no no i think that these are laws we have to follow them. <laughs> but the sign was not written by kobolds so how can it be kobolds only if it was not written by kobolds it doesn't yeah, play. I, well, I, they could I have can hired this. A, they could have hired a sign maker or... <laughs> Toto takes out, like, a piece of charcoal from his pouch, and underneath only, in parentheses, he writes, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Except for uh, on the first out. Tuesday of each <laughs> month between the hours. <laughs> of... Yeah, that definitely Problem gets solved. a good... That definitely gets, like... A high five from Anarissa, who's like, "Oh, you like messing with signs too? Great!" <laughs> <laughs> so. You you get a very reluctant high five back. <laughs> so, in terms of uh, light sources, uh, most of you have dark vision. Uh, is uh, if you don't, you're going to need a light source. Yeah, Toto will pull out a torch. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure folks don't have dark vision. Thank you, Valtrea. <laughs> <laughs> so between the torchlight and the crown, uh, you uh, enter the gem mine. 
And... Do you guys want me to go first to kind of see if I can see anything, or because it is very hard to see me? Mm. It's a good plan. Fred All right. Lightly. So you move ahead to scout. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and load the map, uh, but go ahead and roll a survival check, actually, Anna Rissa. Survival, not stealth? Nope. Okay. Because my survival is plus zero. I'm sorry. Okay, because I thought I was being sneaky. That you are? That's not what this is. Okay. Nope, I'm just checking. I was like, but, oh. yep. <laughs> I am a city girl. <laughs> so, uh, yikes. We do you, have an inspiration. <laughs> this early? Like, <laughs> uh, it's as you're walking in, you do uh, maintain your stealth. You're wearing this cloak, right? Yes. So, as you're, um, it's also freaking cold. I'm, I'm not taking <laughs> off any, any layers. Right. So. As you, as you go in here, maintaining yourself low to the ground to avoid, um, being detected and staying in the shadows. Uh, when the rest of you uh, come in, when when Anarissa gives the all clear, you realize that her cloak has sort of pushed aside any tracks that were located on the ground that you might have been able to follow. But there's nothing here that that's in the entranceway. It's now, a very loose surface. Mm -hmm. as far it's a it's as a the, it, okay. it's a dirty mine. A lot of dust and. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now there is a uh, entrance to the right and two to the south. When I uh, poked my head in further, did I see any like lights or sounds or anything coming from either direction? Something uh, to give us any didn't appear clue? To. Like, okay. Looks like it. Uh, now that you're all in here, you can kind of see a little bit further. Hmm. Uh, are there any like signs on the walls, either from previous miners or more? Uh, so all you see are racks about. holding picks and hammers uh, that are nailed to the walls of the small cavern. The floor is uh, covered with that sort of rock dust uh, that was pushed around. Okay. These mines didn't have any signs whatsoever. Like, what kind of OSHA violations are this? Oh, many, <laughs> many, yes. We're very far <laughs> away from the ocean. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, so Malkara Mal Mal Darkwell, in uh, in fashion as, as of last uh, session, wrote out an entire three-person conversation <laughs> between the three kobolds in the... Uh, oh my god. That's fantastic. Oh, wow. I've that's been fantastic. reading it. It's so funny. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, you know that there's kobolds in here somewhere. Is there a direction you guys would like to go? Um, oh, I will tell you this. Uh, towards where Button is, like that general area, you do think you hear the sound of of water, of flowing water. Oh, is it quite to ask if we heard anything down any of them? Yeah. Can we see any lights or anything? No, it's dark. The only light sources seem to be coming from you. Then you remember that Marv had dark... Well, those of you who know him, kobolds have dark vision, so they weren't. Oh, they they right. don't need a light no, source. Um, really actually, I can help with this if we want. <laughs> Uh, and if what, did you have care in, to. what did you have in mind? <laughs> uh, I can send Lake to scout ahead. Uh, they they can see in the dark. He's a very talented raven. That's impressive. <laughs> um, sure, if you think if you'd like. All right, so uh, go ahead and move uh, uh, Leif if you would, and I'll reveal as the raven goes by. Oh, I will if it works. As the raven. Uh, it looks like uh, as it flies through these tunnels, uh, there's another split. Mm. Oh, wizards in your hallways. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a <laughs> mine. It wasn't... <laughs> it yeah. A mine. A mine. I see you there. Uh, <laughs> give me one second to catch up. More tunnels. <laughs> Goodness. Make this a little easier for you. There you go. Okay. Um. I'm going to allow you just a few more feet of movement. Okay. Well, we kind um, of can see from Leif scouting that 
some of these loop around. So, uh, so. through through Leif's eyes, you do see in this area uh, the east end of this dusty cavern, five feet higher than the rest. So this little um, I'll just I'll just reveal this for you. Uh, this little chasm in the center. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, has a rocky ridge separating the two areas except for slopes on either side. Picks and shovels lean against the ridge. Small gem deposits in the ridge and the walls of this cave gleam seductively. Hmm. Very curvy gems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thickum gems. Uh, as the as the raven comes back and I'm assuming lands on Tira's shoulder, Toro kind of smirks and goes, uh, when, when is a raven like a cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> that was a is good Toro one. Trying to, is Toro trying to tell a joke? <laughs> what's the what's the punchline? Yes, I'm waiting. <laughs> Me too. No, it's a genuine question. It's, it's yeah, no. <laughs> no. Okay, that tracks. He wasn't trying to make a joke. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's a reference to the one as a raven like yes. a writing desk. Is I, that, I, yeah. I was Alice hoping in uh, Wonderland. I was, I was hoping Alice it was going to be a kung. Yeah, I was uh, say Alice in Wonderland. So it's not right. supposed to make yeah. any sense because it's <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> so. I thought it was going to be uh, from uh, kung. F- what was that kung fu movie? Oh gosh. Kung Fu Panda. No. Kung Fury? <laughs> Kung no Kung Fury. Was it Kung Fury? Kung Pao Winter the Fist? That's I can go that, on. I, the Steve Odekirk one. The Steve that Kung is Pao. The, Kung Pao. Kung yes, Pao. Kung and he's like, Kung what do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? Give up <laughs> my ass. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and then it's the next scene. So um, now that we've done that, what would you guys uh, like to do in this thing? You can search other parts of the mine. It looks like there is some gems possibly that you could take the time to fish out of this um, this um, chasm. Hmm. I mean, I'm all for like picking up some stuff, but it's one of those things that if there's potentially a monster in here, we probably shouldn't like yeah. get too distracted right off the bat, or else we're gonna get ambushed. Probably not the best time to tell you, but I am a little claustrophobic, so as soon as we can get out of here, that would be wonderful. I don't really like being underground. Well, no, it I would mean, also be a good like, idea to kill whatever's down here before we make a lot of noise yeah, trying to back get back gems back. out of the wall. Okay. I would agree with that. Yeah. All right, so I can kind of move forward a little bit more i guess are okay. we just sort of picking a tunnel at this point since yeah. mm-hmm. we don't really have so, too many yeah. Yeah, yeah okay so you know what we'll just go a bit towards down the center here and i'll kind of go to this intersection and see if i see anything all right well those stairs uh lead down to a a, a, a lower tunnel peeking around the corner you do see what looks to be uh, another uh raised sort of chasm like a, there's a five foot uh raise up into a, a shelf um, okay and then if I go and I peek down this way? Uh, it looks like that curves around to the side, sort of beyond your uh, your line of sight mm-hmm. there. That That is the direction that the rushing water seems to be coming from. Okay. So I can at least, you know, message that back to the group mm-hmm. and let them know mm-hmm. what I'm finding. Well, I would imagine that something down here that's alive would need water, right? That, that would make sense. So I'm going to kind of move forward a little bit just to get around this next bend. Okay. Looks like this chasm opens up a little bit larger. Uh, I mean, the rushing water is coming from ahead. It's the rushing water, and it's not frozen, being this far down. It's not frozen. Hmm. Ooh, I wonder if there's a hot spring. That sounds lovely. It would be well, nice. Is it? Isn't it when you get further underground, it's more likely to be liquid anyways because of the warmth of the earth? Like, this is me out of character. Like, I think it's more likely for it to be not frozen I don't know. No, cave water is pretty cold because usually it's insulated. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, maybe this is insulated like, guess, the other the way. Mineral deposits so probably there. in it may keep it from freezing as well. If it has a high salinity, it mm-hmm. might freeze at a lower temperature. So, I guess um, it's possible. Well, this is a I'd level like three water, so too. it's unfrozen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to uh, keep... Sorry. Sorry. I'd like to stealth ahead a little bit too. All right. Uh, but in which direction are you going? Um, I'm gonna like go down these stairs just a bit. Okay. I'm curious yeah. about them. 
So benches and tables are set up as a workspace where miners clean any gemstones they find. Gravel and pebbles are strewn on the ground. Scattered across the floor are a few hammers, picks, and broken lanterns. So let me just sort of reveal more of that to you. It's almost like we're splitting the party. I'm f I'm six squares away. <laughs> Uh, let me read uh, the room that um, really quick before you go uh, Tira, let me just read the room that uh, Anaris is in. An underground river seems to be flowing through the far side of this cavern which is supported by natural stone pillars near the water's edge. Between you and the river are two um, stone uh, formations hey, let me just show you <laughs> there you go. There's only one. That's why I was like, two. There's only one little rock formation right here uh, that leads yeah. to the river. Okay. Do I see any, like, where it would seem like people cross the river? Like, are there any signs of boats or anything like that that people would have maybe shuttled stuff across? Or uh, No, it looks like it travels south through a small opening. Okay. Mm. Uh, um, Toro is gonna really quick. sneak forward as well, um, to about here we'll say, and he's gonna be using the torch and like looking at the ground to see if there's any tracks. Uh, okay, yeah. Let me uh, let me finish one thing and then I'll be right at that. Okay. Do, 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 do. I want to do this privately to myself. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. what's everyone's passive perception? Uh, mine's 17. Okay. Mine's 18. Okay. 13. Okay. 13. Yep. 11. 11 and 15? 15. Yep. All right. Nemes Arian's 26. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, this, um, uh, you go down to her, you see that this uh, leads towards the same uh, area where Button is. Uh, there is a, a ledge that drops about five feet straight down. Uh, go ahead and roll a survival check to see if you notice any um, tracks. Sure. 16. 16. So you notice that there are some uh, there are some definitely humanoid tracks, maybe uh, dwarf or human or, or halfling, anything like that. But then you also see the um, Telltale uh, draconic style footprints of, of many kobolds running around here, and then there's okay. also a strange uh, footprint that, with a six, uh, you, you can't quite make out. It almost looks like small points. Small points. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it doesn't look like something with like a foot and toes. It just looks like small like divots in the ground. Almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kobolds on stilts. Exactly. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be the most no, ridiculous goblin. thing. A goblin on stilts is what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I? Is this something that I would be able to tell the size of the creature by? Did I not roll high enough? Mm -mm. No, you haven't really okay. encountered anything like this. Uh, it's not too. Well, I mean, it's totally friendly, and there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, yeah, Toto gets. He walks all the way up to like this cliff here that and works. sees Button at the top. Uh, <laughs> Hello. And, uh, yeah. He looks. He looks straight at Button, and uh, in your head you hear Toto's voice, uh, and he says, um, "There's definitely cobalt tracks down here, and also uh, something that leaves divots in the ground. It's a very odd." track. I'm, I'm not sure what could have caused it. Natel, what are you doing? He's like looking I'm at saying... you, making eye contact as you hear his voice in your head. <laughs> Wait, you're Very talking odd. to me? No, no, no Natel's no, talking to or sorry, uh, Toro's talking to Button. Natel, what yes. are you doing? I am um, putting off going any further into the tunnels for as long as possible. Alright, Valtrea? Uh, same. And Tira? Um, I'll actually move a little further down, just okay. a little behind Anoresa. All right. Okay. Stay with us. And I'm gonna. I guess I'm trying to keep track of what's going on. So I would have messaged, um, tried to message either. Well, if it's a choice between Button or Toro, probably Toro, because Toro is more likely to give me some information um, about what they're finding. So I presume I would. Toro would probably answer and tell me that you found tracks. Uh, yes. He he would 
tell you the same thing. Like he found cobalt tracks. Uh, okay. As well as some kind, something that leaves divots in the ground, just like yeah. spindly legs. Yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> so I'm gonna. So I'm also gonna kind of look around and realize we're missing two people, um, and I'm gonna figure out because I would think Honoris is gonna figure out very quickly why we're missing two people. Um, so as soon as you turn around and look towards uh, Tira, who's behind you, you see this long, almost bone-like point, this tendril, this scythe-like appendage coming out of the darkness and swiping directly at uh, Tira. And let me show you that. It's this fun little friend. Uh. Ooh, yes. Oh, that's So awful. as it comes through, it immediately slashes to attack. They have rolled a 21 stealth. They have uh, surprised this round. I need everyone to roll initiative. Thank you. Okay. That's not Krizik on stilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. All righty. Ex- Holy crap, that's the worst initiative ever. Wow. There are hey. more of them, by the way. <laughs> Am I surprised? <laughs> Alright, let me get to the... What happens when you roll with nat 20 on a surprise round? Oh, <laughs> uh, nothing. You just go first. Next round. Damn it. <laughs> I just imagine we got far into the cave and it's Krizik on stilts and it's like, Natal, you forgot your sandwich! <laughs> <laughs> he would. He would. Oh, that would make He would day. also be woefully unprepared for the <laughs> climate. So he'd be like, he'd be like in his normal armor, just shivering like, you for- forgot your sandwich! <laughs> <laughs> <He'd> be frozen. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so uh, the, the uh, Kruthik directly in front of, um, of uh, Tira will swipe to attack. So let me get to that. Sorry, I'm running three, three things at once. Here we go. Uh, where did my character sheet go? Alright, here he goes. Uh, he is making two stab attacks against you, Tira. Here's the first okay. one. Uh, 20 to hit for 7. Okay, so 7. Oh, sorry, I'll make them public now. Uh, 7 for the first attack. Here's the second one is a 15. That does hit as well. All right, so that's 6 damage. Yes, I am rolling right, with so advantage. 13. Okay, so um, I'm going to actually go ahead and use my reaction. Let's do it. And Hellish Rebuke. Okay. So target is going to make me a deck save with a DC of 15. Okay. Here he goes. Uh, oh, that should not have been an advantage. Uh, so I fail regardless. Okay. Uh, Hellish Rebuke. We are casting it at level three. And um, that is 18. Um, 18 points of fire damage. All right, that works. And it, the fire just sort of racks this insectoid like creature. It is like, ha ah, ha, like hisses in pain. Uh, the, after that one goes, that's when you notice uh, another one directly next to it. And that also attacks. This is why it has advantage because of pack tactics. Oh, okay. First one, 15 for four. Okay. Second one is 25 for 12. That's a crit hit. All right, that puts me at four. Okay. Uh, Toro, uh, you get skipped this turn. There is one left, and then we go back to the top of the round. Uh, you can't quite make out its exact direction as it's like like uh, scritching around its other ones but then you notice it dive into the ground and you lose oh, you lose sight of it fun fun love that for us Tira uh, you lose your turn you lose your turn we are back at the top of the round with Anna Rissa now we're in regular uh, order okay um, I know I'm next to this wall over here is that can I reach uh, I'll let you attack the... that way sure because it's kind of like like moving into Tira's spot Right. Okay. No, I'm just trying to make sure. Um, so yeah. Uh, so I am going to use my uh, short sword on it. Okay. And that should also be sneak attack because Tira is right there. Oh, uh, yeah. That's fine. So does a twelve hit? A twelve. I don't believe it does. Let me double check. It does not. As it just sort okay. of hits off, it's like chit in a shell. Okay, so then, um, mm, normally I would disengage, but Tira's at four points. Um, 
What other bonus actions do I have? Yeah, I'll it's, kind of stay put for a second here. Just disengage, hide, and... Dash. dash. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'd i rather draw some of the attention at the moment. Unless somebody... Because it's going to have... It's going to be right after me, so... Um, so I'm going to stay put for the moment. Okay. Uh, so with that, we move on to uh, the one that you just attacked uh, out of re- uh, you know, being uh, not not reaction in gameplay, but just being hit. It's going to attack. It's going to turn its attention towards you. Uh, let me make sure I read this correctly. It has advantage on attack rolls against a creature if at least one of the creature allies is five feet of the creature. Okay, so no, it, it does not have advantage on this one against okay. you, Anna because you don't have someone next to you. Here we go. First attack. 12. Uh, does not hit. 10. Does not hit either. Uh, nope. the, the one directly uh, adjacent to it goes next. This one is going to be attacking Tira, and this will be at advantage. Uh, 15 for 6. That's going to yep. drop you in it. Okay, yep, sure does. All right, uh, I'm going to put a little X on your guy to show that you fell to the ground. Uh, this creature moves directly on top of your space. <laughs> And will uh, attack Anarissa this time will have advantage. Okay. And this is only one attack. 16 for 8. Okay. okay I'm going to kind of offset it there so we know where Tira is. Um, I can use my reaction to do uncanny dodge, so just be 4. Okay, yep, that works. And Toro, you are next. You hear this scream coming from uh, the cavern um. over from you. Yeah. The drop is um. 5 feet. The drop is five feet. Um, would I be able to shoot over Anarissa? Not, if... no, not with the cavern angling that way. Okay, so in that case, I am going to bonus action dash back around, and I think. And yes, you can be in, in Lave's place. I would say you can't. Well, I would say you may not want to move next to me, but I would say like push me out of the way, but. Um. I was just, I just don't want so Wait, many of us, like, all piled in that one No, spot. I was just trying to see if I could at least keep them from killing her this round, but... Yeah, um, I think if we can at least, like, divide their attention, maybe? Mm -hmm. Margwen, yeah, think, uh, Margwen awarded the party one inspiration. Thank you, Margwen. Hey! Awesome. Ooh, all right. Thanks. So then we're up um, to two, then. Yep. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to bonus action. You said I can occupy the same space as Lace? Yes. Okay, uh, in that case... Because I, I wouldn't be able to hit them if I was there, right? I'm sorry? Uh, no. If I was here, no, I wouldn't be able no. to. Okay, so yeah, then I'm just going to get here. And well, actually, yeah, you could. You could. Sorry, because he's technically in the same spot as um, as Tira. So yeah, I would allow you to attack yeah. that way. But you can also be in Lace's place without any problems. He's right. a tiny bird that's um, on the ceiling-ish. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I can just occupy the same okay, space. I'm gonna put him on your shoulder. Um, and would I be getting sneak attack because Anarissa is there? Yes. Okay, just making sure I have everything toggled that needs to be toggled. You know, All right? right? <laughs> uh, short sword incoming. Oh, 24 to nice. Hit. That does hit for, for 21, 21 damage total. Yeah. All right. Boom. Uh, as and... you run in and you stab directly through it, the sort of green viscous fluid comes out uh, of its shell. Okay. Anything else? Uh, mm, nope, that's it. All right, Button, you are next. Um, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> So it is a, a very narrow cavern, and, and things are difficult. However, I will say, like, if you want to use Anarissa's rough terrain, and if her character isn't fighting back, I can let you, like, push ahead of her, sort of pushing Anarissa back a space. There's also that third one that we don't know where it went, so right. if you're any good at survival stuff, trying to figure out where it might be yeah. popping up. Because um. I think we would have yelled about that and been like, there's three, but we only see two. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming Anarissa would have yelled about that. Oh yeah, no, I'm not quiet. I mean, I'm quiet when I need to be, but so not when I need to be. Is going to say a rogue who's not quiet? Okay. Sorry, but what's up? Go up the, or the, the edge goes up. Okay. Toro was above you. Okay. 
Mm. All right, I can climb 20 feet. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna, you said it's five foot drop? Five foot raise. Okay, so, so 10 feet basically to get here? Yes. Okay. Or if you have a 20 foot climb, don't even worry about that. Just make it five. Oh, okay, five. All right, I'll come here. Oh, Malkara Darkwell, thank you for the DM inspiration. Dun, dun, dun. Hi. Appreciate it. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll come here next to Veltraya. Okay. You can also attack, uh, just so you know, you, if you can get to this space, you can attack this creature. I can get to that space. I'm kind of more concerned about keeping... The, the Danes. That works. All right. Uh, if that's your turn, then it tells next. All right. We're going to move. Oh, I'm taking the dodge action. Okay. Let me give you a little ninja mask so I remember. Natal, why are you down some hit points? Like, I probably didn't recover it from last time. Okay. So am I, are we good? Is it my turn? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um... I'm going. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go here. Um, oops. And I'm going to bonus action, second level healing word for Tira. Okay. And tell her that she's stressing me out. Um, <laughs> she so, uh, yeah, he heal the amount, and I'm going to say you're prone and. Uh, Restrain or grappled, sorry, under the Kruthik who's in your spot. So you heal eight. Okay. And then the Kruthik is like on, there? On it's top, like on, yeah. in the same spot? Yeah, on top of him. Okay. Um. So action. I will shillelagh the Kruthik. Okay. So, all right, so that's a 19 to hit. 19 does hit. Okay. Then, uh, 1d8 plus 2. Ooh, 10. 10, boom. <laughs> As uh, we're... we're uh, Toro stabbed it and weakened the shell. You go in and crack it, and, and the, it just sort of splinters along its carapace there. Uh, anything else? Um, I'm going to move back. Oh, it will get attack of opportunity, but that's okay. It will. Because I am in the way. Okay, so you're moving back. Here comes its swipe. Yeah. Uh, 23 for 5. That one... Okay. Uh, actually, let me re-roll that. I'm sorry. It should not have been an advantage because there's no pack okay. tactics there. So ignore that. 17 for 5. I think that's the same Still thing. Hits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That, as you run across, uh, moving from where you were, that's when the other one emerges. Right here. And it raises up this strange barbed tail and just fires these quills at you. Ooh. At who? N at you, Natel. Oh, I'm in danger. Okay. <laughs> uh, he has two spike attacks. They can go up to 60 feet. Here's the first one. I should have stayed where I was. 19 for 5. 19 for 5 okay. was the first one. Second one is 17 for 6. Good grief. Okay. Uh, after that, it goes to Tira. Tira, you are up. Uh, if you make a grapple check, I'll just move the Kruthik back. Okay, I'm just from where I am, underneath this thing, I'm uh -huh. just going to... Um, I'm just going to shriek, die at it, and thrust my hand up and cast Toll the Dead. So I needed to make a Wisdom save. Okay. DC of 15. Uh, before we do that, does this have a somatic component? It does. Because you're kind of grappled. If you break the grapple, okay. I'll allow you to cast it right away. Okay, He's break the grapple. Prone. He's prone and grappled. This dude's on mm. top of him. I rolled a 13. Okay, I was... All right, I was just checking grappled. And... Oh, it's, uh, it's athletics. If you have it. Athletics. It's a negative one, but okay, well we'll see what we got. <laughs> so close. 
Uh, oh. So you don't, you can't get a hand free. If you have a spell that would uh, allow you to do, if you just have a verbal spell, I'll allow that. But right now, it's like basically on top of you. Yeah, I got. I think no, most of mine, <laughs> most of mine tend to have somatic components, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Valtrea, you get to go next. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna move to here mm -hmm. and then shoot this guy with my new favorite spell, Chaos Bolt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 23 definitely hits for 17. That is a 5 and a 7. A 5 and a 7. Let's go with lightning. Okay. Uh, so that's 17 damage. Boom. As it shoots through it, you can almost see th its its shell almost becomes translucent from the energy uh, as you smash lightning into it. Jeez, that did a lot of damage. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I'm going to move back. To All right. Actually, that would be in Bud's way. I'm going to move back to where it was. Okay. And Arissa. Sure. I'll be your very damaged meat shield. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. You are taller. <laughs> okay. I am going to stab the one in front of me. Okay. And the one that's on top of Tira as that well. That works. This will be sneak um, attack because of Toro. Yes. So... 18 does hit for 18, and with that, uh, you stab into it, and the beast falls dead on top of Tira, who sort of rolls it off of her. Good job. Murder! Okay. And then, because uh, my bonus action is disengage, okay. can I, like, grab Tira's hand and, like, pull her with me? Like, not, like, if she's up but maybe disoriented, can I just, like, lead her back with uh, me? Not with a disengage, no. Okay, just, just trying to see what I could bullshit to get her out of the way. Uh, you can try and do that, but I'm going to have the Kruthik swipe at you. Okay. Uh... No, then I'll just disengage and move back a little bit so I'm not entirely in the way. Okay. And that way, sh that way she can move out if she needs to. Okay. So. Uh, this Kruthik, seeing that it's uh, the other one was killed, is going to burrow into the ground and move away. Now, you lose sight of it, Tira, and you don't really have a beat on it to react against it, so it kind of just disappears. Okay. Uh, but, Toro, it is your turn. Um... So the two that the two that ambushed us first, those came from above us, or did they come from the ground? They came from the walls, actually. Okay, so they they were burrowing. Bur they can burrow in any direction, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, in that case, um, can I I can like hear the commotion happening like to the north of me, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so I think Toro will, uh, oh yeah, okay, that's definitely doable distance. Uh, Toro will get here, Okay. and if I, that doesn't count as sneak attack if I'm attacking this one? No, there's nothing no. to, uh, okay. give you right, a sneak so attack. Alright, so he will attack with the... Short sword, twenty six for five. That does it. Oh, is it just me? Am Boom. I really? oh. And then bonus action with the psychic blade. Okay. Uh, twenty two for another five. Five more. Bam. Good job. Uh, and then bonus action disengage. Okay. Can you move more? Uh, where was I? I don't. I think I might be able to. Because if you I have was... no movement, it would be better to dodge. Here. You can't use dodge as a bonus action. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right, right. Bonus action. Yeah. No, never mind. Okay. Uh, button. I will um, run up and slash. Ah. Okay. Too close. 17 for 12. 17 does not hit. Jeez. Yeah, wow. Their, their okay. AC is 18. Real close. Mm -hmm. That does it. That does it. Boom. As you use your greatsword to smash into it, it just sort of like reels back and. <sighs> Anything else, Button? Um. I don't have any crazy. No. Natel. Um. Well, that thing's almost dead. Uh. So. Although it is going to get to go one more time. That's fine. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna come down, seeing that the other Kruthik is well handled, and I'm going to cure wounds on Tira. All right. Because she looks rough. We'll do a level two, because she looks extra rough. <laughs> oh, that was a level one. Might be. Okay. Huh. Seven. <laughs> oh, seven? All right. <laughs> Alright, I will take it. Thank you. Anything else? Um Oh, I'm gonna bonus action um uh healing word myself. <laughs> okay, sure. While you're doing that, <laughs> I the I am also looking up. The Kruthic to the north is gonna attack uh, button. Okay. He does not have advantage. Seventeen for nine. Okay. Twenty one for five. Alright. All right, as the beast uh, goes on, Tira, you are up. Uh, it takes half your movement to get up from prone. Okay, that's fine. So that's 5, 10, 15. I'll run up here and uh, appear around the corner and we'll attempt to, um, I guess we're going to shoot the, I guess it's the butt of this crew thing? Oh, yes, right in the butt. Because it's that's its weak part. <laughs> yes, yes. Tira there, she has not uh, accounted well for herself. Aiming for the battle. bullseye, so to speak. 14 will yes, miss. <laughs> All right, oh. we're hit, so second shot, a 16, no. no. neither. Okay. Dang. All right, Valtrea. Uh, okay. This is probably going to go terribly wrong, but um, I'm going to come over here. And uh, 10, 15, 20. yeah, that's fine. Reach out and touch him and okay. say, hey, reach out and touch face. <laughs> we just touch Crusade. Oh, critical fail. That's a miss. Luckily, Me. it's just a <laughs> Nature is bullseye, says Mark, when that was good. <laughs> uh, no, that's a miss. Anything else? Nope. All right, Anna Rissa. Okay. Um, let's see. Sorry. Ignore that. Can I, I guess, make a perception check to see if I can tell where this other one is coming up? around. You can try. Okay. Nope. You have no idea. Ooh. Right, so... Um, you got movement left in a bonus action. Yeah, I'm going to move a little bit towards the group just so we're not separating totally here. Okay. And my bonus action is going to hide. All right. Uh, the Kruthik that burrowed under the ground emerges from the chasm right in front of Toro and swings twice with advantage. Okay. I guess. Well, now we know where 17 it is. 17 for 8. <laughs> okay. And second attack is 24 for 5. Uh, can I use Uncanny Dodge to half the 8? Yes. Okay. And Toro, you get to go next. Sweet. He is going to stab the one with lower health with the short sword. Okay, sorry I'm shift pinging. It's for my camera. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, I do have sneak attack now because Button is there. Yep. And yes, and against this one, yes. Okay. Uh, so short sword first. Oh, that's gonna be a miss. Mm -mm. Um, uh, let's go ahead and use the psychic flade too. That'll do it for, for ten. All right. With that, you manage to. So you you guys see Toro miss with one blade, and then just I don't know how this. How does this manifest? Is it like a Psylocke uh, blade? So it's so it's the so the book description is like it's a blade of shimmering psychic power. Okay. So the way I imagine it, it's like mo like mostly translucent. Like y the only time you really see it is like as he's swinging it, okay. and it's like sort of like a shimmering light, and then it just disappears again. That's cool. So as from their as, perspective, like, it's kind of like they saw you miss, but then all of a sudden he just goes like, "There's no," and he dies. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that that Kruthik has also fallen. Button, you're next. All right, uh, I'm gonna run up and uh, slash. Let's do it. Twenty-two, 22 will seven. hit for seven. Yes, boom! As you start cutting into him. And uh, second attack. That will also hit him. Man. All right, he's barely hanging on. Uh, if you're finished, it's Intel's turn. Um. Uh, is this a is this a jump or? Uh, that one is small. The, the the deepest part over here is five feet tall. The rest is kind of like a ramp, so you could get up there if you'd like to. Okay, I'm gonna like scurry about. That's fine. 
give him give him some uh, some space for my okay. my comrades. Works for me. You good? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move up and use all of my movement to get up here. And um, you're going to Shillelagh again. All right. And try to kill it. So, d20. Uh, it's 19 to that, hit. That is. It has five hit points. Plus two. Oh, there and it is. Seven hit points. <laughs> and you just crack him like a lobster. And the, the creature <laughs> falls dead at your feet. Good job. And with that, the, uh, the, the, Underdark denizens of this uh, place almost got some of you guys. They're pretty brutal. But uh, you came out successful in the end. Well done. Those kobolds were weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, everybody, we're going to take just a quick little five minute break, grab a, a quick cup of water or whatever else may have you. Uh, please stay tuned and uh, earn up those craft pint points, and you can earn inspiration for the party or the DM if you want to be evil. See you guys soon. Don't be evil. And we're back, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're in the middle of a Frost Maiden campaign where the characters are going uh, into a gem mine located near Termalane, and they were just attacked by these horrible, uh, what is it, pitch black style monsters? Yeah. Uh, but we'll continue. Kruthix, yeah. Krizix. Yeah. Not Krizix. <laughs> yeah, three Krizix burrowed out <laughs> in the cave. All right. Uh, so knowing that, um, what would you guys like to do now that the the beasts are, are taken care of? Still looking for the kobolds and the perhaps alive person. Um, Tira, do you have a health potion or are you? Uh, I do. Yeah. Thank you. I'll go ahead and um, actually we'll go ahead and we will take that actually. Okay. Natal, are you going to use a health potion or do you need me to give you help? No, I have plenty. I will take one. Thank you. How about you, Button? Oh, I'm all right. Okay. So based on what we've explored so far, it looks like this path down to the south is really the only one that seems to lead somewhere. Seems to be. So... That that is the only path we haven't explored yet. Um. Yeah. So um, I can kind of sneak forward uh, and use my cloak and see if I can see anything if I go forward. Did you want me to roll a sneak? Uh, a sneak? Just yeah, roll a stealth. Just so I have a stealth. A, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, but, but like as she's walking off, Toro will be like, uh, and make sure you're looking out for more tracks as well. I mean, I pro- I, I'm thinking to myself, not replying to where I'm thinking, I'm probably not going to notice shit because I'm used to the city <laughs> and pavement, but like, we so will. If you wanted will, to uh, yeah. avoid uh, a, a 12, okay. If you wanted to avoid a um, a bunch of peoples um, uh, ambushing you, if you, the rest of you want to wait in this room while Anna Rissa goes forward, that is fine. Yes. So I would just plop y'all down there. Okay. Sure. So I'm looking for, I, I love the fact that even though I've got this stupid cloak. It's still like twelve. Um, okay, oh, no. so I'm Jack rolled two the- fours, but Angela rolled two ones. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You uh. took all my luck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, Anaris, you move uh, forward, and as you do, just this the sound of the water is just increasing and gets more and more loud. Uh, and uh, if you want to place your, your little friend uh, down at the bottom there, I'll keep revealing. Okay. Uh, you see this uh, open chasm. The wood planks and struts form a walkway along the wall. So let me show you that. I feel like there's going to be a waterfall here somewhere. Aha! Uh-huh. Uh, yep, mm-hmm. there Good it call. is. Um, along the wall of, an, of a seemingly bottomless vertical shaft, it goes straight down. Um, a narrow waterfall cascades down the northeast wall and the sound of rushing water is loud in confined spaces it looks like there's another tunnel leading on the other side of this walkway okay so I'm relaying this back how stable does this bridge look I mean it's I presume this is a dwarven mine it should be decently well kept it seems okay 
I hate it when you phrase things like that. Um, <laughs> Sorry, chat. Let me shift ping you so you can see what's going on. Yeah. So I'm going to move forward cautiously because okay. I don't trust you. Um, as I move along, am I noticing anything loose? Anything Where are you exactly? Let's say I stepped out just to, I guess, about here, just to test it out. Roll a perception check at disadvantage due to the loud waterfall. Okay. Seems okay. Oof. Cool. Well, because it's so loud, can I do things like shift my feet ahead of me a bit like touch it and see if it yeah, if it wiggles gives. and nothing nothing seems to wiggle okay well i also have feather fall so i'm not dying um so i keep carefully moving forward okay we'll just kind of go there mm -hmm. not dead yet all not right so we're gonna yet. move forward seems okay okay yep and i'll move here all right let me reveal that to you so uh, a, a, a wooden pulley system. X marks the spot. <laughs> a, wo a wooden pulley system has been constructed around a large hole in the floor. A bucket big enough to hold a humanoid is held up by thick rope. Three alcoves next to the lift contain wooden boards and mining equipment. It looks like this um, bucket can be lowered down by either a crank on the wall or a crank <clears throat> inside the bucket itself. Mm. It's an elevator. Okay. But it only right. fits one person at a time. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like someone has to stay and operate it. Uh, no, you, it can't be operated from, from the inside of it. Either way. Oh, okay. So I am relaying this. And I'm also making sure that when I use message and relay this that I'm saying, by the way, I couldn't hear shit going over the bridge. It seemed okay, but you might want to be careful. So that folks hopefully do better perceiving <laughs> than I do. <laughs> what would you guys like okay. to do? Well, um... I can, I can keep going. Noise send Leif down to check out the elevator shaft. The elevator shaft? So over here? Yeah, we can send Leif down to okay. check it out. Okay, so I step down on the bridge. Do I notice anything? Uh, not yet. Okay. I feel like this bridge is probably yeah. fine, and Chris is purposely using this <laughs> language just because he knows it messes with us. Yeah. Uh, Tira, roll a perception check. Disadvantage because of the uh, thunderish, thunderous crash. Okay. I'm going to move forward so people have spots to go to. <laughs> uh, Everything seven. seems hunky dory. Okay. Actually, you know what? You guys can push past me. I'm going to peek out because if any of you guys fall, I can use feather fall on you. Okay. <laughs> I will, uh, and go here. That works. I'll resolve Leif uh, after Button finishes what he's doing. I'm just going to cross the bridge, I suppose. Right. How far down is the hole? Imperceptibly deep. Mm. I don't like it. I sort of, like, hug the wall as best as possible. And... All right. Also make a perception check at disadvantage. Okay. Everything seems Oof. great. Uh, uh, Leif is, is being sent down the shaft. Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah. This one here. That one there. That works. All right. I'll tell you what he sees after this uh, next person. Hmm. I'm like, um, Button, go to one of the alcoves or something so that I can watch for people falling. You're, you're in, in my, my way. way. You're uh, in yeah. my way. I just move against the wall. Go. Just go. <laughs> oh, sure. Let me just walk through five other characters. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You say, excuse me, and you keep going. <laughs> uh, Toto Teenagers. makes his way across the bridge. Okay. Uh, perception check, please. Disadvantage because right. of the same. Just see, like, behind you, you just hear, you just hear Tira going, pss, 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 pss. Over. 19 at disadvantage, Chris. Uh, so even over, like you're, you're, you see uh, Toro's ears perk up uh, from a small sound coming from beneath the floorboards. And as you're stepping on it, you just feel like a small give. Uh, you hear this. Um, 
how can I put it? It's it's just like a rubbing sound coming sort of from beneath your feet, and then you hear a. <laughs> Uh, to everyone that he can see so to Anarissa and to Natel uh, in your in your minds you, you hear Toto's voice and he's like there's, there's something under the bridge I, I think it's weakening it uh, and at that point um, oh god he will pull out his short sword and like get down on all fours and peek uh under the bridge sounds good uh as you start to lower your head over the edge of this um cliff uh through uh Leif's eyes tira you see that this this uh chasm goes down about 15 feet uh to another level of the um of the mining structure about 15 feet down all the way over uh i'm gonna shift ping you you're all gonna freak out all the way over here okay i'll shift ping you back okay make sense that's where the big chasm leads not the no that's where the little the, elevator the, leads the little chasm yeah. okay the elevator yeah. yeah okay uh as you look down you see uh two kobolds that are hanging almost monkey bar style from underneath this uh, walkway and each one has a little handsaw and they're like <laughs> like sawing through the wood with no warning Toro will swipe at the closest one with the short sword roll on attack roll I'm going to give you advantage because they're not paying any attention to you alright <laughs> do I also get sneak attack or is that what the advantage yeah why is? not sneak. you have advantage yeah, yeah if you have exactly. advantage you okay. get sneak attack that's a 26 for 20 damage. <laughs> I'm going to scoot you a bit because you're actually technically on top of him. He's right here. Uh, so this uh, little friend, uh, <laughs> you you uh, you see him and you kind of just like bop him offside the head. He's like, ah, and he instinctively reaches up to grab his head, but then he falls deep into the chasm and you see the, ah, and it just sort of fades away feels bad. to nothing. Toto does not because they were trying to kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there is still one more, and he's like, <laughs> and he looks back towards his apparent friend, and he's like, mm-hmm. oh shit. <laughs> uh, bonus action throw. Am, am I close enough to like actually uh, like swipe at the other kobold, or would it? Is it like outside of? Uh, melee range. You'd have to move a little bit further. He is low. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. He's here. Uh, oops. That's not what the button does. He's here. Underneath the, the thing. Do you guys see him? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Toto will, like, uh, dive uh, this way uh, along the bridge and swipe again with the short sword. All right. Same thing. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, that was an advantage. My bad. That's you know what? Uh, it's fine. <laughs> you hit him, and he flies into the underdark with a, ah! <laughs> and you killed uh, Thwip and Scorp. They are both murdered. <laughs> under, under his breath, he's like fucking kobold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he inspects the bridge. Is there? Is there? A- is there significant damage that like more people crossing would be a problem? Not enough that it would do anything. You see some small divots in the supports, but they'd have to be doing this for hours or even a trap to be remotely possible here. They, they're okay. wasting your time and theirs. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking that's I was thinking I was like this was built by like this is a dwarven mine. Yeah. This, this would take quite a bit to sabotage. I mean they could try, but like how long have they been left alone with this? Yeah. That, with little hand saws. That's, <laughs> like, that's that's why I didn't he- that's why I didn't hesitate. I was like who knows how long they've yeah. been here? Leif made <laughs> made his way back up. Uh, the, you can walk across the bridge like normal. Uh, it looks like the only way down is either the giant crevasse with, uh, you know, where the kobolds fell, or using the elevator. Hmm. Probably should go for the elevator. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. Okay. So uh, basically, the way this is going to work is I just need to know uh, who's going first. I don't know how sneaky we can be if we're using the elevator. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it makes a difference at this point sending me first or having somebody else. I, I wouldn't think so. Can anyone think of a other tactical advantage here? Like, I would send the fighter first. Yeah. I, I, Quite meaty. Yeah. A person with the most hit points should go first. 
So is that going to be button? <laughs> is, is it literally going to be our conversation with characters? So I need to know how many hit points. <laughs> On a scale of zero to fifty-two, how? <laughs> me, um, me drink one of my uh, potion of heal, my my potion of healing to uh, before I take the elevator down. Okay. So uh, you drink the potion, and you're rolling that, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Uh, four. Or plus one. Well, I plus two. Okay. Six. So you uh, you drink the potion. You place yourself in the bucket. It's exceptionally tight for your large tabaxi form, uh, but you're able oh. to still utilize the pulley. It, it seems strong. So even though it's tight, it's not like, cre uh, like creaking or anything. And it, it, it takes you... About 30 seconds to 45 seconds to lower yourself all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and move button for you, okay? Okay. Uh, excuse me, my mouse is freaking out. Why can't you pan? Alright, well, I'll, I'll take care of that. Your mouse doesn't like playing with a cat. There yeah, we go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> that was good. Alright, so button, I placed you over there. Uh, who's going next? I'll go next. Okay, I'll take Leif with you. Okay. Oh. Did I get Tira too? Where did Tira go? I'm right Still here. there. Same place. Same place. <laughs> I saw the I saw the bird vanish, but not not Tira. <laughs> oh, uh, can you move Tira for me? Uh, she has vanished from my. There you go. All right, cool. Got yeah, it. Right. I got it. I got it. All right, cool. Now right. we're good. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Stop! 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 No. Nope. There we go. There we go. Okay. Who's next? Uh, I'll go next. You sure? Okay, yes. sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I kind of look at Valtrea and Natel, and I'm sort of checking in with them to see how they're doing down here. And if they seem like they're going to be okay going down the elevator. Just get in the I'll hole. I'll have to leave as soon as possible. Yes, let's, can we please get this over with? <laughs> okay, do you guys want to go before me just to get, get in the hole? hole. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I go, and I'm like over here. All right, sounds good. I'm like, I'm just trying to be supportive as I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, who's next? Natal um, first. Okay. I look at the bucket and I look at my hips and then I look at the bucket <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll try. <laughs> With the jar of mayonnaise would come in real handy. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought? Two gallons of mayonnaise. They can also wild shape into something smaller. Uh, actually, I was going. That was the end of that joke. Is I'm I look at it and I'm like, that's not going to work. And a wild shape into um Big a giant chunk? wolf spider. Wolf and then spider. Just okay. call my way down. Okay, that works. I was, say, I was, like, I was gonna say Toro <laughs> got down it. Okay, so yeah, you know. Eh. So wolf spider going down. Uh, Valtrea, you were able to use <laughs> the um. Used to sneaking into you're able to use the something, bucket something. as uh, <laughs> as Natel is lowering herself down with the spider stuff. So let me move you guys. And let me just make sure Valtrea was the last one to go down the thing, technically so. The mechanism creaks as if the bucket lift descends to as the bus, bucket lift descends to the floor of a small cave where two dusty tunnels lead in opposite directions. Can you shift me there? Oh yeah. Thank, thank you. Looks like there's a tunnel that leads to the north and to the south. Okay, you hear uh, you hear some snickering coming from the south. Uh, can we, can we make or can I make a perception check just to see if I hear uh, just anything else? For more information. Okay. Uh, Fourteen. It's similar to the kobolds that were. Uh, the sound is similar to the kobold speech you heard from the two that fell down the giant hole. <laughs> uh you see you see Toro sort of like he like bares his teeth like oh I, and he's like and he gestures to the south. <laughs> okay. That's that's his vote. <laughs> okay, so is this south of like directly south of where I am? Uh well southeast. It is to, basically to the left now, y'all. Southwest. Oh okay. <laughs> One hop this um, time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll go forward. Um, I'll, since I'm still um, a big old spider, um, I'll just get up on the ceiling and go that way. And right. I have blind vision up to 10 feet and dark vision up to 60 feet. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a stealth check as a spider. Okay. 
Uh, <laughs> Are you a large or medium creature? A medium. Mm. Yeah. Um, what is the... What is... That's dexterity. Dex. What it's is dex. stealth? Oops, ignore that. Uh, dex. It's dex. dex. You just roll dex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your DC's an 11 right now. <laughs> oh, okay. The loudest spider in existence. <laughs> so, uh, I just imagine just I'm a hey, spider. We, we, we have an inspiration. Do we, do we want to use it? Yeah, we two inspirations. We I'm do. I'm inspire that. All right, I'm you'll use inspired that. by how awful that was. That works. That again. Hey, everybody, I'm a spider. All right, you guys have one inspiration. Oh. <laughs> God. Wow. Okay. Well, that happened. Wow. That happened. Yeah. Uh, that's right, Margwin. Wow. It's a spider with tap shoes on. That's what that is. It's pretty magical. <laughs> All right. Like, that's right. All right, guys. That's right. So go ahead, uh, Natel. Move over here. <laughs> okay. <God. laughs> hey, hey, hey. So. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a table and chairs set up in the area to create a space for miners to take breaks. On top of the table, two kobolds are poking a giant rat with their javelins to make sure it's dead. The kobolds screech loudly as they as <laughs> tell. Peter Parker's it on day one, trying to swing and move across the ceiling, but misses the timing and just wah, falls on her back and his legs doing this. And the kobolds are like... Ah! <laughs> Uh, they, they seem afraid. Uh, they have moved away from you. They have javelins at the ready, but they don't move to attack. And I just, I'm trying to roll back over before anybody else sees me. I think you guys <laughs> slowly really walk hard. up and see this. I'd like to say that. <laughs> uh, you hear a shriek coming from the south if you're not already over there. Yeah, we're uh, yeah, I, I, I thought we had to yeah. initiative. I was just waiting no, for you to say No, no, they are yeah, fucking the horrified. Running, like, fuck. I won't leave Veltrea. Uh, or Natal will run. Okay. Yeah, I see Veltrea come in and I just kind of wave a leg like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Veltrea, I'm going to move you. Like, one of you guys is in the set here. Yeah, let's put. Let's do this. We did it. We did it. <laughs> and they say, ah, uh, uh, <clears throat> they just flabbergasted. They don't even want to say because there's a giant fuzzy pink spider that just fell in front of them, and scared the shit out of them. <laughs> oh, so, man. what are you doing down here exactly? They look at each other and then they look back towards you and say, "We're on, we're on break." Fair. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. That's big ears. How big is their rat? Um, it's. It's a giant rat. It's de de like probably oh, okay. a foot and a half a a across. Hmm. I, I sort of batted around a bit. The rat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> sort of, I just kind of like take it and I push it off the table. <laughs> they move away. He's like, you can, you can, you can eat it. You can have it. Just don't kill us. I was trying to make commentary, and then I realized I'd hit the mute button by accident. <laughs> no. uh, so. Anna is going to move forward and make her eyes glow more than they usually do. Okay. And stare down the nearest kobold and go, I have no desire to kill you, but I will if you don't cooperate. This is your one chance. Uh, uh, we, we, we surrender. We surrender. Trex told us to come down here. We're, we're just doing what he wanted us to do. Is Trex the human? Human? No. He's a kobold, like us. But he has okay. wings like a dragon. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are you doing down here? Well, that's where we're, we're mining. This is our mine now. There's a lot of pretty rocks. No. <laughs> well, no, 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 wait, hold on a second. I mean, I assume they would have just as much right theory as anybody. Mm. The ones that are paying us are the ones that own it. Maybe they could work for them. I don't know if there's an agreement that can be reached, maybe? Mm. Agreement uh, would be good. Like they... Better than murder. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, it's I one mean, of those could... things. Yeah, go they ahead. Could get paid to mine, perhaps, instead of just doing it out of, like, fear, perhaps? Well, Trex says that the miners do want their mine back. Trex wants something better in return. Hmm. 
You sound very different than the kobolds I'm used to. So... Agreed. It must just be a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> We're from okay. north of the border. <laughs> <laughs> well, consider this. Uh... We were paid to clear out the mine of any monsters, uh, but if you were to come to some kind of agreement with the actual owners of the mine, uh, we wouldn't have to clear you out, as it were. And when you come to an agreement, and I take a coin out of my pocket, Mm -hmm. and I sort of show it to them, and I go, do you know what this is? Oh, that's gold. It is. And when you, if you work for the miners and you get gold or shiny rocks, do you know you can trade these for food? Hot food? I have heard of such things, yes. That rat is not hot. Not anymore. No, no. But you could actually trade this for food and other things. And so this might actually work out better for you. Well, We're just on break. You'll have to talk to Trex about something like that. We don't really have a lot of... uh, That's above our pay grade. We're low on the kobold totem pole. And I just kind of go, can you tell us where we can find him? We'll see if we can work this out. Because really, one of my closest friends is a kobold, and I have no desire to murder you. Well, Trex is smart. He He speaks like a human who knows a lot. He doesn't speak dragon anymore, though. Anyways, we don't like monsters either. In fact, we saw some really ugly-looking ones earlier. They kind of are on the, down that way, he says, pointing back towards the way you came. Yeah, we already we killed those, so you don't have to worry about those. Yeah, those tentacles are disgusting, aren't they? Uh, yes, they really are. Not a fan. No, the critics Wait, didn't have tentacles. What? It's another it thing. Involved. We have to kill. It's fine. <laughs> okay, we, Let's go. Yeah, well, we'll find that one too. No worries. So enjoy your break, and okay. we'll go. We'll go talk to your boss. Sounds great. Um, <laughs> Thanks for not killing like us. Wobbling on my back, like okay. I can't really get up by myself. Uh, oh, hang, <laughs> on. hang on, <laughs> grab one of the eight legs and kind of. Yeah. Pull. <clears throat> just, as, yeah. as we're I doing do this, nice we, I just look at the kobolds and I'm like, "Don't worry, she's with us. It's fine. She's oh, not a monster." Okay. You can tell because she's pink. So. Before we uh, walk away, I'll go over to their rat and use prestidigitation to warm it up. Oh, <laughs> delicious! <laughs> and they both um, start devouring the uh, the rat and pay you no never mind. There is a uh, hallway to the north over here where Anna Rissa is. Okay, and I presume that's where they pointed to, like, he's Trex is that way? Trex is this way. Right, let me make this clear. Trex is this way. Monsters are this way. Cool. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to kind of sneak forward here and see what I see. So uh, heading in that direction, you see a few alcoves, and there's still some of that, that the, the shiny uh, rocks that are sort of around there. Um, and then around the um, corner, you. you see a, um, a, a ramp that leads down further into the mountainside. Okay. So I relay that to the others. I'm not going to go down just yet. Um, but now, now the I rocks aren't can. just like on the ground. It's kind of like you'd have to mine them out. It's not like you can just like, hey, look. I can't just like pick them up and mm-hmm. go. Yeah. No. Yeah. We should do that on the way out. Maybe like when we've cleared everything out of here. Right? Yeah. I will uh, come up behind dinner. Are you going down or what? Again, I was just waiting for some of the others to catch up. Yeah. Sure. Right so. Yeah, so I'll start, now we've got people coming, um, I'll start going down, uh, stealthing as I go. Okay. So I'll go uh, ahead and, I in case am... you need it, I'll, I'll roll it. Oh, hey! Well, shit, yep, no one's gonna know where you are. Uh, let me, uh, let me take control of your, everyone, uh, hands, hands off your mouse for just a second, let me, let me get y'all down here. Da, 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 da. All right, you're gonna vanish for a moment. This ramp is so well built. It's like we teleport down instead of slide. <laughs> uh, Tira, I'm kind of just putting you willy nilly, and you should see yourself right about. Nope, that's not the right one. Right about now, here. Uh, let me shift ping you.
Is that one kobold's name Small? Mm-hmm. Isn't that yes. great? I did see that. Oh, that's amazing. Big fan. He's the biggest one. <laughs> Correct. That's a great kobold name. <laughs> They're all pretty good. They are. So uh, they're all they're all good kobolds. I like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> two of them are dead. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's right. They were trying to kill us. Uh, the tunnels <laughs> uh, the tunnel slopes downward and ends where it opens onto a center shaft. A, a wooden walkway extends from this opening and runs westward to another tunnel in the rock in front of you. A large bucket, like the one you saw earlier, dangles from a taut rope that stretches southward across the shaft and is connected to another wooden platform uh, 15 feet away. So let me reveal that to you. So this is the continuation of the same shaft from before. The other levels are above you. Um, This rope leads across, like I said, to these other two alcoves over here. And then there's also a tunnel that leads uh, to the west. Okay. Um, Probably on that side is uh, at least one unlockable, like, collectible item. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I am going to kind of see it if I can go across the bridge here and peek down this way and see if I see anything. Okay. So. All right, give me a second. That's not the right tool. How far is the, um, are we from the first level? Uh, uh, about uh, 30 or 40 feet. Okay. All right, hold on a second. Uh, Okay. Lurking in this dusty tunnel are three skittish kobolds. Let me reveal them to you. Mm. One of them carries a threadbare satchel and wears a pair of fake dragon wings made of thin wood and thin wood and tattered white cloth. This kobold immediately raises its hand in surrender, saying in common, "We mean you no harm. Please don't hurt us." That's this guy Perkins, right here. Perkins, you piece of shit. You stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I feel uh, like wow. Ani is this close to laughing by seeing this costume that they've come up with um, and that the others believe. Um, but she sort of looks back at them and goes, I really mm. have no interest in harming you. Uh, but we need to come to some sort of arrangement here. Otherwise, the owners of this mind are going to keep sending people down to kill you, and uh, they're going to succeed. Let's be honest. Oh, oh, we don't want that. Please, please understand that we were actually attacked by a yeti, and we were looking for shelter, and we found this mine shaft. Now, a bunch of kobolds coming into a mine shaft obviously raised a panic, and the miners ran off before we could explain to them that we meant absolutely no harm at all. Well, good news. The yeti is gone. Actually, all three yetis are gone. So you have that option. But also, we can talk to the owner of the mine and see if you would be interested in working with them because they can. And I kind of, again, show the coin. I figure this one knows what it is, but the others down here probably don't. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, clearly, if you would like hot food and I kind of look at his outfit and I'm like and more things to wear and add to your stylish accessories you might need some of these in order to to get that well I think my dear a lot more than a single gold coin would be what that costs well true I just have this on me but you know he it's continues on. Visuals. Visuals. <laughs> he says, The everlasting winter has made the wilderness unsafe for my kind, and the preternatural cold dulls our wits. Please, we only want a place to stay, so we can keep out of the horrid weather. We can work, and we won't cause any trouble. Tourmaline would be richer for having us. I think that's fair. We can try it. We will certainly talk to... Um, I forgot the guy's name, but my character probably knows him. The, the one who sent us Speaker Matthew. Here. Yes, we can talk to the speaker and um, set up an, a meeting maybe between you and him and see if you guys can come to an arrangement. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that I don't think this needs to end in bloodshed. There's no reason for it. Very fair, but we have to tell you, there are monsters still in here and we are afraid of them. 
Well, we've found three so far. What others do you know about? Well, there are these strange creatures that almost look like large brains with tentacles. And believe it or not, a beak. Oh. Nope. That's not mm. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are the I'll rest of you guys uh, doing at this moment? I am uh, sort of like plucking that rope. How t- how taut is it? Uh, it looks solid. Uh, there's a bucket that rides across it. It looks well made, much like the lift was. Okay. Um, they don't hear me talking at some point. I mean, or is the the waterfall? Well, too I just want to hear what what. Uh, so, Natel, what are you? Uh, what what were you saying? Oh, they're just talking. So I'm just you know on the ceiling dropping little bits of webbing onto Toro's head. <laughs> <laughs> Toro, roll a roller perception check. Okay. <laughs> just imagine like you take it like one of the like little claw tips and like just playing with like his little ear tufts. Okay, you absolutely <laughs> know where this is coming from. <laughs> Uh, I think I think Toto feels like the first one, and like you see, like his ears flick, uh, and then he feels the next one, and he uh, he like moves up onto the bridge <laughs> next to Button, okay. and like he like does not acknowledge you at all. He just like <laughs> saunters over and just sort of stands. So what would you guys like to do at this point? Basically, Trek says that he and the kobolds are wi- willing to go back to Tourmaline if you can um, take care of the monsters. Are there... Are there... To... Oh, sorry, Button? Sorry. Yeah. I said, I assume we have to take care of the monsters anyway. That was yeah. why we were sent down here. Right, so... Yeah, sure, we'll help you out. Um, but I relay what the monsters are, because... It's... Is that something that any of us would recognize? Like uh, you can roll a nature area? check, but you're going to do it at a disadvantage. Uh, well, okay. Ex- Wasn't, I mean, I nope. mean would I my sage background help? Uh, yes, you can roll normally. Okay. But none, of you, none of you have ever encountered this before in this no. campaign. I'm going to guide myself as okay. well, because I feel like I've read a book about beaky brains before. I took a look in a book. In a book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just reading thinking Rainbow. That... Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> That's, that is a pun inspiration. Yes, I love that. <laughs> is that the title of our of this episode? Yes. <laughs> reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Not roll a fucking two. Oh. 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 Nope. Doesn't sound like you've ever heard of anything like this before. Yikes. That is like the third nat one I've rolled this game. Uh, yeah. Toto will like walk over, and I'm assuming here, like uh, some kind of. Maybe he happens to wander over as they're describing the creatures, uh, mm-hmm. and he just sort of like leans in and just like, "Are those the only sorts of creatures you've seen recently?" Well, talking to this one here, you mentioned something about these strange insectoid type creatures, but you said you took care of those. Yes, there were three of them. Yes, uh, there are also three of these creatures, and they are somewhere on the level I above see. us. I see. Our best tactic so far has been running away. I mean, it's not a bad tactic. Um, Uh, Have you seen what they can do when they attack? Yes, they can wrap you in their tentacles and eat you. Oh, are they magical creatures or? I am not sure. I didn't stop long enough to look. Fair enough. Feel Um, free to take anything you find. It's not ours anyway. (laughs) <laughs> um well i'm i'm fine uh with i suppose brokering some sort of agreement um but i it, it sounds like these other creatures are a bit mm, more deadly than the ones from before uh, we, we you- may want to go back and relay uh what we've learned first Perhaps someone uh, in Tourmaline is more familiar with what these creatures could be. Maybe the miners have seen them. It's possible, but you do know they're above you, so you're going to have to go past them to get back up where you came Our job is to clear them out, though, Toro, not to report on them. Fair enough. Uh, if, If we happen across them, then I suppose so, yeah. Do we know what's on the other side? Nope, you haven't explored down here yet. 
have can we ask the kobolds? Uh, they say, uh, there's some shiny rocks, things like that. This is as far no, as the miners got, like... but we're kind of hiding over here. Gotcha. But there's no monsters, just shiny rocks. Very well. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go over. Okay. If I can. Uh, with your uh, feline climbing abilities and the the structure of this, I'm gonna say you just you can get across no problem. Okay. Yeah, you can. Like a cat. Mm -hmm. You can go down the catwalk. Is what, is what you can do. <laughs> uh, would you I'll... like to do the uh, bottom or the right hand side first button? Um, I'm gonna get off and uh, like I know it's very very loud, but like, am I noticing anything? down this one down either one of them no they uh, both seem quite silent silent any wind or anything no all right um i look back over at everybody and i'm like i'm going to go north i'll go with the kitty okay you're gonna have to make a uh athletics check or an uh, acrobatics check it's not gonna be hard because you are kind of using the bucket you're kind of just pulling yourself this way you say that as I roll in that one. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. So as you as this happens, you're moving across. The bucket snaps beneath you, leaving you dangling from the rope in the middle of the <laughs> rope. Uh, if you don't get picked up soon and you fall, there is no coming back from this. Okay. Um, I, what can I do? Can I hop? Can I get onto the rope and just grab her? You can try. I sprout wings. Oh, oh yeah. Look at you. I got it. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So uh, yeah, you can easily flutter to the other side with button. I imagine you do a couple loops and stuff because yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you got him for a minute. It's pretty yeah, cool. Malkara, the, the the rope is very well built until somebody rolls a one, and then it goes straight to shit. Wow. Uh, so are we doing the uh, right tunnel or the southern tunnel first? the northern tunnel okay the right yeah but i'd like to try to be like stealthy about it okay uh hold on a second i don't think you need to nope don't need to worry about it this this room is empty it looks very much similar to the one you had before but it's been less uh worked through you can see the um the uh the geodes in that area they're sparkling geodes they greet you as you enter the room the gems are partially exposed in places sticking out from the walls like glassy shards the floor rises near the eastern wall leaving a natural ridge with stone ramps leading upward on either end so basically if you'd like uh, you don't really have like a pick with you per se but you can use your sword to try and harvest some of the gems if you'd like mm. no. there's nothing important for now okay um I shall check the other tunnel. All right. As well. Uh, this room is significantly smaller. Oh. Um, it's tiny in here. It's cramped. Now, uh, you notice the same sort of geodes. However, you do see a um, something strange poking out of the wall. Um, looking closer, you see it's a fossilized skull partially jutting out of the east wall of this small cave five feet off the ground. The skull has larger than normal eye sockets, a curious ridge between the eyes, nothing that would pass for a nose, and four small holes where one would expect to see teeth. Hmm. What do you make of this? I can't say that I've ever seen anything like that. Uh, Valtre, you can roll an arcana check. Oh, okay. okay. Jesus. Not sure what it is. It seems vaguely familiar, but you can't quite make it out. Maybe it's the light. I, um... Um... I sort of... I take out one of my, like, torches that, that's not lit, and I just kind of poke it with the stick. Okay, it falls out of the rock and bloop, 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 lands on the floor. It wasn't in there very deep, was it? No. Did it look like it was placed there? Uh, no, it looks like it was excavated. Hmm. I, uh, I st stick the stick into one of the eye sockets and I pick it up. It It is held up. Any, like, glow or any nonsense? 
Uh, let me double check. I'll grab it with as Mace you here. As you do that and wiggle it around, you notice a small crystal looking much different than the other geodes in this room it get dislodged and fall out of one of the holes on the bottom part of its, of its uh, jaw area. Um, it looks... Let me see. Is there a picture of it? I don't think there is. Uh, but yeah, it's a small, clear crystal. Hmm. I'll pick it up with Mage Hand. All right, you pick it up in your hand. Mage Hand. It doesn't do anything. Very good. And touch. Yeah. I don't know. I should. Should we keep this? This skull. Uh. Seems like it could be important. And it seems like. Maybe. They, there may be something worse down here than what we know of. Yeah. Mm, all right, I'm gonna put it, the skull in my bag. Okay. Yeah, put, I don't like walking around with dead things. Put strange crystal in your equipment, and Valtrea, if you're keeping that gem, put strange crystal in your equipment. <laughs> all right. It could be if you spend a longer time with one of these items, <laughs> something could be revealed. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Buttons, uh, Finesse, and Valtrea's flying speed, you make it to the other side of the rope without any difficulty. I'm assuming you didn't find any monsters over there? Just the skull of a monster. Hmm. Uh, can I tell anything about it from an Arcana check? Uh, you can roll an Arcana check if you like. Natel, are you proficient in Arcana? Mm, nope, I don't think so. Okay. Let me check. That's uh, a seven. Uh, no, no, never again. seen anything like it before. What about Anna Rissa? Uh, do I have to be proficient in uh, Arcana? I'm asking if you if you are. Uh, I don't have a little checkbox there, so uh, I have a plus but, two, but there's no checkbox. Oh no, box. that's that's barred the jack of all trades. No, um, no, it, it, maybe maybe. No, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm that's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm so right, used to the yes, bard where it's no. like, well, I can just click whatever with no. the bard. Uh, no, it looks like if you get out of this area and, and uh, look at it in in brighter light, you might be able to figure it out. But it, it seems semi familiar, but you're mm. not quite piecing it together. Yeah, you would think having the arcane trickster yeah, side of think, rogue but... that it would give me that proficiency. <laughs> however, nope. All right, so uh, what do you guys? Uh, what would you like to do at this point? Guess go back up and kill these monsters. Yeah. All right. Yeah, D does anyone fun. need to go to the bathroom before we fight the monsters? <laughs> no, Are we good? I think I'm okay. Yep. I'm good. All right. Everybody in the audience, good. Everyone good? Because <laughs> I'm not turning this train around. We're going. <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right. Uh Do we want to think of a plan of action here, since we know we're going in, and there's these monsters? While you're discussing, I'm going to move you back to the second floor. Okay. Okay. Um, well, we know we know they have tentacles, so I think perhaps ranged weapons uh, will be more beneficial here. Uh, Button, do you have any sort of crossbow or just the? I can throw one of these javelins. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, those those javelins you've had on your back the entire time that I definitely <laughs> would have noticed. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, uh, yeah, right. It's not like you were a barbarian in a past life. I know that would be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> um, so yes, uh, long range, I think, uh, would be the way, the, likely yeah. the way to go. And if they're floating brains, I'm just thinking that, based on how monsters we've seen tend to work, I imagine that means they might have the ability to do stuff at range too. So we might want to just be cautious, you know, dealing with. Right until we know exactly because even though they said they weren't sure if they were magical or not if they're essentially tentacled floating brains they're probably magical okay they have no eyeballs so invisibility won't help right um yeah i was there I was like i have magical darkness which may do shit <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well what would you like to do go down the tunnel uh is there an order to this or are we just going in blind uh i'll go all right. So you guys are heading in this direction if you want to rearrange your peoples. Yeah, I'll go right behind Button uh, if he's going first. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. And Arissa, where are you at? 
I am going to go, I guess, maybe in the middle of the group here, and that way, that hopefully, works. I can get some sneak attacks off. All right, let me reveal this uh, chamber to you and describe it. Another chasm. It's the same one. Just... <laughs> A hole in the west side of this chamber opens into a central shaft, letting in the sound of the waterfall. The floor in the north end of the, of the cave is five feet higher than the south end, with a rocky ridge separating them and a slope on either side of the top of the ridge. The walls above the ridge gleam with gem deposits. Uh, I need... What is your passive perception um, button? Thirteen. Uh, so knowing what you are looking for, uh, you actually look up and you see floating a, a small, about, about five feet above the ground, or five, uh, five feet above your line of sight is this creature with this huge beak. It's like a brain with a giant beak and these tendrils sliming on the ground, on the bottom of it. Not Ooh. great. Uh, you hear more sounds coming from above, but you can't quite see them. You just see that one. It has not seen um, you yet, unless you... If you decide to move forward, I'm going to see if it sees you. Hey, I don't know okay. if you're trying to be stealthy or what the plan is here. I, yeah, I was... Yeah, I kind of plan on being stealthy. Okay. I'll turn around and do, like, the eyeball thing. <laughs> Two words. First word, sounds like. <laughs> uh, okay. Brain. Tentacles. Uh, telepathic tel telepathically, Toto is like, um, we should, uh, sneak forward and, uh, spot as many as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. All right. So here's how it's going to work. If you're going to be going into this fight, I'm going to roll a perception check for them. Oh, no, they're passive perception. They're passive perception. They're not looking for you. Their passive perception is a 14. Anyone who rolls a stealth of 14 or higher earns surprise this round. Nice. Okay. Oh, oh you, you don't have advantage. advantage. Roll again. Well, I had a disadvantage, man. Or either way. That yeah, works. Uh, oh, wait. I forgot. Uh, Furbolgs have the hidden step ability. Okay. Uh, they can turn invisible as a bonus action. Okay. So I'm, Toto's just going to use that. All right. Yes. And sneak I'm going, forward. Yeah, I'm going to pop out of wild shape. And I'm also going to turn invisible. After I see Toro do it, I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> do I still have to make a stealth check, Chris? Yeah, I actually need to check a rolling really quick. Okay. Um... Okay, uh, you you're gonna roll stealth like normal, even though I'm invisible. Mm -hmm. They have no eyeballs. They got no eyes. Oh, uh, that's fair. That's still okay. Okay. Bonus action has been to... spent this round, though. Yes. Do you want us to move further into? Uh, the no, no, no. Pattern? Just everyone roll your stealth. Everyone's okay. good so far. Valtrea, you do not get um, oh, surprise this round. Uh, Anarissa, I see an advantage one. Oh, because of yes. your thing. Uh, it's not actually going to work against these things, because it doesn't it rely okay. on sight. It's basically you're invisible. Uh, it, yeah, it's camouflage. Yeah, so, so it's not going to work. You have to roll normally. Okay. Yeah, let me... Natel, they don't see you? I think it's because I'm invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my passive perception, I think I said it was 14, didn't I? Yeah, it's 14. Yeah. So, uh, un unfor first... unfortunately, Natel and Valtrea, you will not get surprised this round. You'll act when the rest of them do. You but mean they... Anarissa and... You mean me? Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Anarissa and Valtrea. My bad. Uh, and now, uh, you see more of them emerge, and we're gonna go right into combat. Here we go. Okay, do we need to roll our initiative? Yes, you sure do. Okay. Seriously? Crap. Oops, I accidentally rolled twice. That's bad. Okay, are we all in here? Looks like it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Did you roll for um, Leaf? 
Oh, but. I certainly will. Let me go ahead, and I believe his was a plus three. Yeah. That's a 12. Okay, I'll pop him in there. All right, here we go. Uh, the Grell goes first, but he is unable to do anything at the moment, so we go to Natel. Ooh, all right, let's go. Um, we're going to... Um, I probably cannot see into that place. So I'm going to move forward a little bit. Don't forget, you have two inspirations. Okay. As this is the final bottle. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to scoot all the way over here. Okay. Um, and I am going to conjure two giant vultures. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. No feathers. No, feathers <laughs> intact. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me find some, some vultures. Let's see what, let's see, let's see what the, uh, they come up with. I'm just uh, thinking about giant vultures. Okay, look for some so reason, big. this is our vultures. Let's go with that. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, I'll at least go with the something brush. vaguely bird shaped. Here you go. I guess okay. that's what we get. Uh, that does actually look like a vulture, so it's, it's, at least that's yeah, fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everyone has control of these vultures, so you can place them where All you right, like. I'm going to conjure them right here. Okay. All right. I would say if they're giant vultures, what's their size? Is it still one square? Oh. Uh, that's a very good point. Let's see if they're large or medium. They are large. They're okay. large and in charge. Okay, so let's okay. see how this is going to work. Uh, I might have to move you, Valtrea. Or Natel, sorry, I'm going to move you here so I can That's enlarge fine. this vulture like this. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry, audience, you can't see. I'm running two screens at once there. There you go. Whoa. Uh, he can't fit there. Well, no, sorry, I accidentally clicked somewhere. I oh, okay. I'm supposed to. I'm gonna put um, them back. They're flying. Do they take up floor space? Uh, they they are. No, they're too, flying. They are flying, but the 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 floor yeah. the, the roof is only about 15 feet high, so there's no like, they take up all that space. Damn, I shouldn't have done this. They're oh. gonna be in the way. Um, not necessarily. I'm thinking it's gonna be easier for a few of us to get sneak attack because they're just so damn big. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't really think that through. Um, okay, I mean that's that's kind of. Oh, all they don't I can do anything. Do. do they get their own initiative? <laughs> they do. They get their. I think they get their own initiative. Okay. Uh, I, think I would say most of Alex's ones. I'm do, gonna so. I'm gonna give them the same initiative. So just roll once. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna move on to Tira. Okay. Fourteen. <laughs> Tira? Okay. Uh, we're going to move up here. Mm -hmm. And we are going to, uh, bonus action, cast mm -hmm. Hex on this Grell. Okay. So if I hit with an attack, does an extra 1d6 necrotic damage to it. All right. And then we're going to try to hit it twice with uh, Eldritch Blast. All right, let's do it. That's uh, so a 22 to hit with the first one. Yeah, and that does sure eight hits. Damage. All right. 24 to hit with the second one does four damage. And Hex fires off twice. So that's another four and 10. So that is 14, 22 damage to that particular Grell. Okay, got it. So 22 damage, you said? 22 damage to the Grell. All yep, right. right in front there. So he should be at this number. Got it. Um, Boom. Can you give us an idea of when they're starting to look rough? Just because we won't be able to see, we can't see the. Uh, oh, you can't the see their bars. thingies? Oh, yeah, that's fine. But like I, I said, okay. if you yeah, don't want to tinker nah, with it, you can just nah, give I'll us an idea. It won't take me long. Oh, okay. I did really just missed a checkbox. They should be appearing now. Oh, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what it takes to make things visible like uh, that. It depends. So I was, if I've made the tokens, it's not hard. If it's a, the built in token, it takes a little bit longer. But, anywho, okay. it's uh, Tira, are you done? As me, yep. Toro, you you succeeded on adva on the thingy, right? Yes. Now I haven't forgot about your giant vultures, but we're still gonna run the surprise round, and then I'm gonna pop them in there. Okay, Natal. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to get here. Uh, and shoot this growl okay. with the short bow. Uh, do I get sneak attack? Uh. 
The vulture's right there. Because the vulture's yeah, in I'll, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll let thing? it go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You do have surprise on them, so I don't. Yeah, you, uh, you would have it anyway. That's true. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen hit? does hit. So that's twenty Sweet. damage even. Boom. Twenty nice. damage. Holy crap! Uh, and then, I guess just to get out of the way, uh, can I? <sighs> I know furbolgs are really tall. I wouldn't be able to like occupy the same space yeah. as a vulture, right? No, no one yeah, will they're, be. Well, Whoops! They're, if they're up in the air, there's no like, up in the air. The, they're, if they're giant, if they're large creatures, they're <sighs> taking up that whole area. Oh yeah! Yeah. To drop the spell. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a 15 foot area, because... and they're kind of just like, "Hello, I'm yeah. a vulture." Um, I they'll also they were large. Yeah, but they'll also buffer us for this first round, so it's not like yeah. The, Tora, the, the other girls are gonna have a hard time getting uh, to us. I'm gonna. I guess I just I don't know if I should move back to where I was or just stay here okay well I'm gonna uh, go on to Leif while you're deciding okay um, I'm just I'm just gonna move back but like bonus action dash to back to where I was okay. so Leif right. yep. Leif gonna fly forward and uh, Leif is going to attack let's go so let me all right, Leif is. Sorry, I'm looking up because I have a special. All right, that is a plus five. Oh, I updated Leif's character sheet, by the way. Oh, did you? okay. So if you all click on it, it should come out correct. Okay. Right, so that's a twenty-two to hit. Yeah. And is going to do. Uh. All right, so I'm going to do six piercing damage to the thing. Got it. And I am going to need a constitution save from this Grell. All right, here it comes. Uh, DC uh, is 11. I passed. Okay, so roll. Oh, sorry, that's to GM. I'll make it public for now, but I rolled a 17. Okay, fantastic. Um, five poison damage to it. All right. Uh, yep, that's fine. Oh, it doesn't look good as it's as Ooh. this baby bird like basically like tiny beak <laughs> inside the big beak out the other side. <laughs> uh, button is up next with the sneak attack, or the surprise round, I should say. Okay. You could be in the same space as as Leif. That's fine. All right, I will. Um, I will rage. Okay. And I will come and attack. Uh, recklessly. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you describe how you uh, pop this uh, brain <laughs> in your yeah, I slash through it as I keep running to the other one. That's badass. All right, you can keep moving, and if you can, yeah, you can go there. You can also move here. That's also fine. Okay, I'll go there. Okay. And just reckless spring my sword up. All right. This is like a Sylvester and Tweety moment right now, only nightmarish. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the rest Holy of us are shit. going, nice. didn't we talk about keeping distance? 13, boom. <laughs> it was, yeah. Nice job. Any, anything yeah, else? Uh, button, well done. Um, is your rage damage built into the yes. initial attack? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah there's a little toggle button. Plus four, plus but, two. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. um, okay. I will, uh. Wait, 10. Um. I will, uh. Take a chance at a. Uh, at an opportunity attack okay. and try to step back a little bit. Here he goes. Uh, 21 to hit for 10 damage. Okay, 5 damage. All right, you got to make a uh, DC 11 Constitution saving throw. Okay. Oh, you succeeded. Oh, that, uh, should, that shouldn't have been an advantage. Okay, try again. Or really, either one would work. I'll let you Both have it. I'll let you good. have it, yeah. yeah. Uh, you succeed. As well. Okay, none of that pertains to you. Yep, so you managed to get away. Uh, you do take the damage, but you don't you don't get uh, the, the par fine. paralysis. Uh, the Grell loses its turn because of surprise. Anna Rissa, did you succeed in the surprise? I think you did. Nope. No, you did not. The Grell also did not. Beltrea didn't either. So now we're going to go ahead and descend <laughs> and start with Natel again. Okay. 
Um, I don't know if I should drop the spell or not. Uh, I mean, you could always hold an action until the Grell, like, kill the vultures. I mean, yeah, it's um, it, they are buffering us. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm just going to... There's not really much I can do. Um... Uh, can you hold an action until after the vultures have attacked? Because their turn is coming up. After yeah, Tira. yeah. Chris, is that? Can I do that? So your hold yeah. action can be after the vultures' turn. I'll use my bonus or my ready to action to drop the spell. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That works. Any movement or anything? Just in the fucking way. Or not? Nah? Huh? Any movement or anything? What? Movement or bonus? Uh, no, I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to say, Ugh, these things are a lot bigger than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Tira. <laughs> Okay, do I have any sort of line of sight on the uh, grill through the vulture? Not with course? all them flappings. If you were able to stand here, you would. But that's no, real I close. Stand there, though. That's that's a that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could hold an action too if you hear a Natal go. I'm well, going to drop this. Well, these this things is all kind of happening simultaneously, so we can only meta game, yeah. but so much. Okay, why does it know? Like Natal tends to talk out loud, that's okay. so but, I can but see But this your is also angry. happening at the same time. Yeah, it's also it's all okay. at the same time. <laughs> Okay, so as she's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and use bonus action to move um, move hex to what's say this ground. Okay, it's right here. Mm -hmm. So that is now hexed, and I actually have Eldritch Blast. It's not gonna really work there, unfortunately. Um. I'm going to actually go ahead and use uh, Toll the Dead. They are within 60 feet. It's a spell. Okay. Um, uh, can you pop that in the chat? Would you mind just so I have a reference uh, to it? I certainly can. So you just click on the little uh, speech bubble Madu, and it should show up for everybody. Yeah. And Toll the Dead. Here we go. Oh, one creature can see what it is. Uh, yep, you can see it. That's fine. You can see it through the flapping, no problem. Uh, wisdom saving okay. throw. Okay. Okay, that works. That works. Uh, uh, wisdom saving throw. Here it comes. All right. From the grill. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, no. So that's going to take 2d8, because I don't think it's taken any damage yet. It has not. Uh, no, it took it a little. Has. It took a little bit. It did take yeah, a little bit. From yes, oh, from, exactly. from that button. That is then 2d12. Oh, Ooh. okay. Let's do it. Nice. Okay, I believe that is the 19 points of necrotic damage. Okay, why is there two? Um, one is probably the 2d8 if it's not oh, taking okay. any damage, and then the other, the 2d12, oh. if it's missing any hit points at all. Yeah, so if you takes... hover over it, it gives you the formula. Yeah, yeah I understand I that. I'm just saying, like, does it take all of this? Is that 30 no, it damage? Takes... Or it takes 19? 19. Oh, it takes the 19. I get it. I get and it. And then yeah. does it also take that extra damage from the hex? That's what I'm trying to figure out, because Hex, I don't know if it triggers just on an attack or if it triggers off spells as well. I don't... Uh, let's see what it says. No, it's not. You didn't hit it with an attack. That would have... Okay, I made yep, a save. That's kind of yeah. what I was mm -hmm. thinking. It would have to be something yeah. like Eldritch Blast or a weapon mm -hmm. attack. Yeah, okay. that, that would have counted. Cool. Uh, if you're done, then it's Valturo number uno, the one to the uh, to the left now, y'all. Yeah, that is me. Right. Um, <laughs> Vulture slide, y'all. So, oh <laughs> um, they do have pack tactics. Okay. Yes, that'll that'll go into effect. All right, and they have multi attacks. I'm gonna try to do pack this as fast tactics. as I can. <laughs> yes. What did he just say? <laughs> what did you tactics? just say? Pack tactics. Pack tactics. Pack tactics. Pack tactics. Oh God, I hate you so much. Um, <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so we got eight twenty. This is for the beak. Um, Thirteen no. does hit. Okay. Um, so that's two d four plus two. All right. So that's six damage for that. Got it. And then um, attack for talons. Tactics. Oh, it's seventeen and an eighteen. Okay. So About, uh, that hits. Yeah, it hits. And that is two d six plus two. Nine, so it's going to be 15 damage total. Got it. And then, um, can I attack the same one with Vulture Numero Dose? Yes, and still have advantage, yes. Okay, cool. All right, so Beak. Uh, 
that. Ooh, now 20. Hey, there you go. Double dice nice. damage. All right, so this is the 2d4 plus 2. All right, so it's going to be 14 damage from Beak and then Talons. Uh, 17, 18. Yep, Why? that'll hit. I save all my good rolls for now. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be 22. Yeah, I got uh, it. Yeah, 22 damage. Boom. As you're, <laughs> it's, it's bird on bird action, beak to beak. Uh, <laughs> anything else? Uh, nope. And after their turn, it is yeah. my hold action, and I'm going to drop the spell and say, sorry, guys. I forgot how big giant vultures are. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> They're gone. Uh, Toro. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, Tor will move here and share the space with Leif. Okay. Um, and use the short bow to attack. Uh, no sneak attack this time, right? There is yeah, no sneak attack there. here. Okay. Uh, Twenty will hit though. Five. Uh, sorry, uh, was that the one here or the one on the left? Oh, that was the one on the left. Sorry. Okay. So five damage. Yep. And then he's also going to. Uh, yeah, bonus action, throw the Psychic Blade. So 17 for 6 damage. Uh-huh. Does it. And that's the end of his turn. All right. Uh, Leif is next. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to concentrate on the one that we were attacking before. So Leif's going to fly up there and do his attack as well. Okay. All right. Uh, that's no. 8. Probably doesn't hit. No. Nope. All right. Is that it? Ah, that's going to be it. Button's next. All right. Uh, still raging. Still reckless. Mm -hmm. Eighteen will 18. hit for 14 damage. 14 damage. Got it. Uh, second attack. 15, uh, 15 does hit for 13 more damage. Good. Uh, and sort of... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm envisioning the button, like, raging, but still, like, <laughs> dying, like, like that while he's trying to figure out like he's just doing it <laughs> angrily <laughs> that's fine I'll I will stay there okay uh, uh, it's the Grell's turn the one directly in front of you I'm gonna use disengage and get the fuck out of there 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 coward Ooh, uh, do I get uh, yeah disengage. yes you will yes you will because okay. I had to go through this space Yes, I'm going to try and pop it like a pinata okay. with my quarterstaff <laughs> on my little shillelagh. So, oh, fuck. Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, yes. Just make enough for all those all, all all right. ones. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, well, all right. So that's um two so that's it's only the dice number not the bonus that's six damage <laughs> i don't think i get it i can't even begin this is exactly how many hit points it has exactly six hit yes! points yes! <laughs> so as it goes oh. by it tries yeah. to fly away from button and you just like poke it and it explodes over the chasm <laughs> and just rains I look at bird button, guts down and i just like kind of stick my tongue out at him <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this oh, girl no. was gonna do the same thing, but just seeing what you did, he's like, uh, fuck that. Uh, he's gonna move forward. Wait, did we skip me? Did I? Oh, I'm sorry, Anarissa. Yes, I did. did. Oh, because I deleted the grell that just died. Got it. So, my bad. Uh, Anarissa, go ahead. Okay, no, I was just confused. I was like, wait. No, I was, <laughs> sorry. I know I when I delete them, around, but this... they, they go down initiative. My bad. Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. Like I said, it was, it was one of those things where I just looked at it. I was like, wait, I, I, I. I think I get to play at some point. <laughs> um, okay, I do not have sneak attack, but I'm going to use my short bow. So, seventeen will hit for not. Oh fuck! He had eight hit points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. I'm, like, I'm here, guys. So he Shoot. pops against the wall. <laughs> All right. The uh, the information from Trex seemed to pan out as you were able to get the drop on these Grell. Holy crap, guys! You took out three Grell. Like. 
pretty damn quickly. Remember in Chalice and Chains when we fought against them and they were quite vicious? Yeah. 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 Uh, having the jump on them was beast. All right, well done. With that, the final Grell pops like a pinata and is dead, leaving you in the tunnels alone. So uh, we're reaching the end of our time here, guys. So just wanted to say those of you in the chat, thank you for so much for hanging out. We're at 153 of our goal of a hundred of 200 followers. So if you haven't done it yet, please be sure to pop it in there. Uh, a quick follow makes all the difference. Thanks so much. Now, before you guys go, is there anything in the mine you would like to do? The mine, actually. Yeah. I that remember. sounds yeah, good. I'll get some of these good, good geodes. All right. So it takes some time <laughs> to mine them out. So the, basically, this is how it's going to go. Um, it, it, how, it takes an hour to do the whole mining, but I'll just be nice to tell you there's no more monsters in here. Uh, but each person needs to roll a D100 to see what you find. Ooh. Okay. Um, so I do have a engineering pack. I don't know if this is going to matter to uh, Chris for mechanical purposes. It has a crowbar and a hammer in it. So I don't know if that makes it any easier hmm. or whatever. But uh, it, okay. Well, it does say I've a also character. Got a hammer and a crowbar. Yeah, it does has a character using a miner miner's pick spends an hour chipping away at the walls. Roll percentile dice. I'm going to say that either you have it on you or you're able to find some like equipment around the room, uh, the remains of the thing. So you, I'm allowing everyone to roll this. Okay. Normally you need the equipment to do it, but I'm just giving it to you. So let's see what we got. In the hour of mining, the tell. Actually, let's see. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh. Oh, only, only, An only Anarissa was able to find something. No. I am so sorry. And that oh. is a pebble-sized tourmaline worth one gold piece. Wow. Oh boy. An hour of work. You like we've earned more than that dude. Now hold on a second. Um I'm just gonna hold on to it because it's pretty and at this point it's just yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh also to make this uh fair, you did go to the geode work face uh workplace, the, the, the area on the lower level. I'm gonna say each mm -hmm. of you earns ten gold pieces worth of uh of gems from that because they were all like ready to go. That was the last place the dwarves uh, were mining from. So everyone get ten you. gold. Okay. okay. And Arisa just gets 11! <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to, like, kind of check out the skull a little bit more. Okay. Uh, let's let you... Hmm. Uh, well, it, we're basically just leaving the mine at this point. You don't seem to notice anything special about it, per se. Uh, if you spent a time, like, attuning to it, let's say, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but we're we're we're, we're we're wrapping this up. It's not going to be a okay. Uh, yeah, but I can. What I can do is I can mm. start the next adventure with what you find attuning to it. How does that sound? Sure. Same, okay. same for the crystal, if you'd like. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So what we're going to do, guys, is next week when we play, we're going to start with uh, uh, Trex and the Kovalds uh, coming back with you to Termalane, and then soon after that, the uh, reuniting with uh Mirnix, who's gonna make it because they have the orb <laughs> nice <laughs> you'll you'll All be right. nice and and let the player character arrive safely <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, in the maw of alvin the owlbear no, just kidding. She'll be around, <laughs> yeah. around safely. All right. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you come uh, check out Friday, I'll be playing some Halloween-ish kind of games, so be sure to come check that out Friday at 7 o'clock. We'll see you guys all next time. Bye-bye. Happy Halloween. Bye, everybody.